All rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. The fifth session of the Senate, the first regular session of the 19th Congress, is hereby called to order. Will be led in prayer by our distinguished majority floor leader. Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come before you, humbling ourselves, knowing that uh, apart from you, we can do nothing. But if you are with us, no one and nothing, no circumstances here on earth can be against us. Today, as we start our session, we ask that you forgive our sins in words, in thoughts, and in deeds, and allow us to be uh, acceptable in your throne. We pray for your treasury of wisdom to be upon all of us as we uh, uh, perform our duties and responsibilities, not only for our country and people, but also for you, our Lord, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue to exalt your name and ask that you bless every senator, every um, employee of this uh, institution, every family represented in this institution. We uh, praise you and thank you as we carefully give back to you all the, all, all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody agree and say amen. And amen. amen. Secretary, please call the roll of members. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachelian, Senator Go, Senator Ontiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. We have a perfect attendance, ladies and gentlemen, with 24 senators present. The chair declares presence of a quorum. Mr. President, indeed, it's a great day today. And uh, we'd like to uh, put on record and welcome in the gallery guests of our distinguished colleagues, uh, guests of Senator Alan Cayetano, Vice Mayor Richie Reluia of San Fernando Cebu, <laughs> guests of Senator J.B. Ejercito, Vice Mayor Michael Ray Villano of Taal Batangas, and Councilors Warren Alcaraz, Jeff Tamayo, and Zensky Bellio, Barangay Captain Zalazar. Guests of Senator Angara from LGU of Hawaiian uh, Lanao del Norte, Mayor Romel Arnado, Vice Mayor Arnado Jr., Maximo Arnado Jr., SB Dimalanta, SB Moner, SB Makabato, SB Mang Manangolo, SB Bandejon, SB Tan, SB Roble, SB Manangolo, uh, Kosein, SB Ascension and Mar Mary June Carvalho. We also have with us guests of our Senate President uh, from the province of Bukidnon, Board Member Mario Alvarese Jr., Board Member Beltran Jr., BM Casinabe, BM Benito Baguio, Board Member Joseph Palmada, Board Member Rosal, Board Member Jose Pepito Jr., Board Member Evangelista Jr. We welcome them in this uh, August Chamber, Mr. President. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the guests, especially the uh, uh, all the uh, public officials that are here visiting your Senate. Welcome po, particularly my kababayans from Bukidnon also, the board members from Bukidnon. Welcome to your Senate. Well, Mr. President, there are also uh, guests in the gallery. We have with us Mayor... Kevin Roy Makanlalay of Kalasyao, Pangasinan, former Mayor uh, Mark Roy Makanlalay, Councilor Virgil Howe of Tubigon, uh, Bohol, guest of Senator Jingoy Estrada, guest of our Senate President, Attorney Alan Panolong is also here, Mr. President, and guest of uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, Mayor 
Gina Menil of San Benito, Surigao del Norte. We welcome all of them, Mr. President. Once again, welcome to your Senate, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 54th session, Monday, February 27, 2023, and consider the same as approved. There will be no objection to the motion of the Majority Floor Leader. The motion is approved. President, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. There will be no objection. We ask the Secretary to proceed with the reference of business. Bills on first reading. Senate number 1923, requiring critical information infrastructure institutions to adopt and implement adequate measures to protect their ICT systems and infrastructure. Senator Revilla, Jr. The Committee of Science and Technology and Finance. 1924, converting the Balyay, Tawangan, Lusot Farm to Market Road in the municipality of Cabayan, province of Benguet, into a national road and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. Referred to the Committee on Rules. 1925, establishing in Barangay Tablon, Cagayan de Oro City, province of Misamis Oriental, a satellite district hospital of the Northern Mindanao Medical Center, to be known as the Barangay Tablon, Northern Mindanao Medical Center, satellite district hospital, appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. Committee on Rules. 1926, converting the municipality of Liloan, province of Cebu, into a component city to be known as the city of Liloan, Central Marcos. Within rules. 1927, declaring the municipality of San Mariano and the municipality of Palanan, province of Isabela, as ecotourism zones to be jointly known as the San Mariano Palanan Ecotourism Corridor, Central Villar C. Ministry of Tourism, Environment, Natural Resources, and Finance. 1928, establishing the Virology and Vaccine Institute of the Philippines and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Villar C. The Committee of Science and Technology, Ways and Means, and Finance. 1929, establishing a Cancer Medicine and Treatment Assistance Fund for Indigent and Underprivileged Filipinos, Senator Villar C. With this on health, demography, social justice, and finance. 1930, requiring the inclusion of entrepreneurship as a separate subject in the junior and senior high school curricula of the K-12 program, Senator Villar C. The Committee on Basic Education and Finance. 1931, identifying tourism develop development areas in the province of Isabela, mandating support for tourism development, creating the Isabela Tourism Council, Senator Villar C. Committee on Tourism, Environment, Natural Resources, and Finance. 1932, revitalizing the salt industry, creating a comprehensive plan for its development, providing incentives to salt farmers and exporters, providing funds and for other purposes, at our BNI. The Committee on Agriculture, Trade and Commerce, Ways and Means of Finance. 1933, declaring Barangay Kapatagan in the city of Digos, province of Davao del Sur, an ecotourism site, appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. Based on tourism, environment, natural resources, and finance. 1934, creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Pulung Bulo in the city of San Fernando, province of Pampanga, Senator Marcos. Based on local government, electoral reforms, and electoral reforms. Uh, resolution, Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7, Concurrent Resolution Establishing and Maintaining an Integrated and Secure Digital Legislative Management System for the Congress of the Philippines to be known as the E-Congress, introduced by Senator Zubiri, Legarda, Villanueva, and Pimentel III. Per two million rules. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 500, urging the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry on the proposed construction by the Bureau of Corrections on a parcel of land located in the protected area of the Masungi Geo Reserve, Senator Cayetano P. Ministry of Tourism, Environment, and Climate Change. 501, recognizing all Filipino women scientists, both living and dead, in commemoration of the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, Senator Legarda. The Committee on Rules. 502, conferring the Senate Medal of Excellence to Thes Thespian Dolly De Leon for receiving international distinction, Senator Legarda. Median rules. 503, urging the proper Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry on the implementation of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund and other programs of the DA addressing the plight of Filipino rice farmers, Senator Legarda. Median agriculture and food. 504, congratulating and commending the 33 awardees of the 15th Annie ng Dangal Award, Senator Legarda. Median rules. This additional reference of additional business. reference of business resolutions. Proposed Senate Resolution 505, requesting the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the reported failure of former Saudi overseas Filipino workers to register their claims for back pay despite earlier commitment made by the Saudi government to settle claims. Senator Tulfo. Committees on Migrant Workers and Foreign Relations. 506, recognizing and commending the recipient of the 15th Annie and Dangal Award by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts for their respective international accolades, Senator Revilla Jr. 
Committee rules. 507, expressing the sense of the Senate to strongly urge the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board to postpone the planned phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2023, pending the resolution of valid and urgent concerns raised by affected operators and drivers regarding the financial viability of the program. Senator Poe. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, before we proceed, let me also acknowledge and welcome in the uh, uh, in this uh, August chamber, our good friend, the former governor of Davao Oriental, Congressman Nelson Dayanghirang, uh, representing the first district of Davao Oriental. He is here with us. I see him on the back. Uh, welcome to your Senate, Congressman, our dear colleague in the legislature. Uh, I believe Senator Pia Caetano, Majority Leader, would like to be recognized. Yes, Mr. President. I move that she be recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I think my my resolution on the Masungi Reserve uh, was referred to the Committee on Tourism, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yes. Is that correct? I think it was okay. My staff said it was, and and that's okay because the uh, there are I think one or two other similar resolutions that were already reserved, re referred to the same committee. May I just ask that the Committee on Sustainable Development. Uh, be the second referral. Yes, there we have being no objection, no, Mr. President. Yeah, there being an objection, Majority Leader. Yes, Thank Mr. You. President. Uh, we joined the uh, motion of the uh, distinguished lady. Therefore, from, uh, the motion is approved. Okay. Thank you. Uh, based on the for query. the bill, sorry, sorry. Not just for my bill, but for all the bills. No? So all that, three because bills. I believe the that chairman concerns, of the committee yes. will have one hearing. Yes, thank that, you. That concerns uh, with the same oh. topic, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, based on the query, uh, thank you, Mr. President. Based on the query of Senator Pia Cayetano, I would like to ask where my uh, resolution has been referred because my staff tells me that Senate Resolution 422 is referred to another committee, but not the committee that will hear the Masungi Geo Reserve. So may I request with the permission of the leadership and the chair of the committee so that all resolutions can be heard as well and incorporated. Mine was referred to another committee, but this is something May we which, ask Madam the title of the committee uh, of the resolution? It's, yeah, Masungi resolution. Uh, Senate resolution 422, it was... Um, referred, I think, Mr. President, in the Committee of uh, Environment and Natural Resources. We can um, also... Uh, I it to the if judgment the, of the chair. If the distinguished uh, lady from Antique would, would like to uh, uh, join in the... Um, transfer. Transfer also, Mr. President. Transfer we, referral we to the, the, the Committee on uh, Tourism. The reason why I brought yes. it to the floor is because in the uh, yes. course of committee chairmanships, we have to request the chairman of the committee to which the bill or the resolution has been referred permission, whether the jurisdiction of the resolution uh, will be lifted in favor of another committee. So I would um, ask the secretary to deal with that we have and to the be, committee chairs. Thank you, madam. Yes, we have to you. be very careful also yes. on the referrals because I believe some, I'm being told now, some of the uh, committee uh, or the resolutions that were filed have to do with land grabbing and therefore it's not a tourism issue. Uh, and therefore it's a it's in an ambit of another committee. Um, unless, of course, with the permission of the, the body, plenary power is always the uh, the most, uh, uh, of course, okay, most important, the consent of the body. Okay. Mr. President, let me uh, state for the record that the uh, chairperson of the Committee on Environment and Natural Resources already uh, spoke to this uh, representation, and she has no problems, uh, Mr. President. If the distinguished lady from Antigua, Senator Legarda, would want to uh, uh, transfer the uh, referral from Committee on... Uh, uh, environment to committee of uh, tourism. Is that the wish of the distinguished lady senator? Yes, so that there would be an alignment, so that the resolution may be heard as well when Senator Binai conducts her first hearing. Thank you for that, Mr. Chair. Therefore, there be no objection. Yes, we uh, joined the motion of uh, Senator Legarda, Mr. President. Therefore, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture and with the permission of the body, I move to consider Senate Concurrent Resolution Number Seven. This resolution pertains to establishing digital legislative management for e-Congress. So move, Mr. President. There be no objection. The motion is approved. We ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. 
Concurrent resolution establishing and maintaining an integrated and secure digital legislative management system for the Congress of the Philippines to be known as the e-Congress. Mr. President, to sponsor the measure. Plus, maybe to hasten the proceedings, if it's a, with the permission of the body, I will just submit to and insert to the records my uh, sponsorship speech uh, for the measure and just recognize our majority leader to give his sponsorship speech. I, I, Are you reading my sponsorship speech? I will also deliver. Um, follow your footsteps, uh, Mr. President. We need at least one of us to into the record. deliver. Maybe I can ask, I can request the majority leader to deliver the sponsorship speech of this measure. Sure, Mr. President. I just wanted to put on record, mine will be inserted to the records. So we recognize the distinguished majority floor leader to read this uh, sponsorship <laughs> speech. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, it is my honor to sponsor Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7, filed by no less than our beloved Senate President Juan Miguel Zubiri, Senate President Pro Tempore, Lauren Ligarda, Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel III, and this representation. Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7 seeks to establish and maintain an integrated and secure digital legislative management system for Congress of the Philippines to be known as the E-Congress. This is in line with the, concur with the current administration's strong commitment to digitalize, harmonize, and standardize government services and data with the ultimate goal of ensuring efficient and fast delivery of services to our people. Mr. President, the need to digitalize our government systems and, and services is made even more apparent during the height of the pandemic as demand for connectivity and online availability of various services increased. Thus, both the Senate and House of Representatives agree and commit to pursue the development of an updated digital, integrated, and secure legislative management system to further strengthen coordination between our houses, facilitate citizen engagement in the legislative process, and provide timely, more effective, and responsive ways of managing, monitoring, and reporting the legislative performance of the Congress of the Philippines to our dear Kababayans. Mr. President, I therefore move and urge this August Chamber to swiftly adopt Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7. Thank you, dear colleagues, and may God bless us all. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. Anyone who wish to also sponsor, we'd like to recognize our Senate President Pro Tempore, the distinguished lady senator from the island of Panay and Republic of the Philippines, Senator Lauren Legarda. Thank you, Mr. President. I join my distinguished colleagues in the initiative of establishing and maintaining an integrated and secure digital legislative management system for the Congress of the Philippines to be known as e-Congress. Now is a time better than any for those of us upon whom our laws have assigned mandates and duties to perform as a bicameral Congress to ensure that both chambers of Congress require constant collaboration, coordination, communication, and sharing of knowledge, resources, and information. The information ecosystem has found its relevance in today's world. Timely, accurate, and clear information requires the right digital infrastructure, efficient information systems, resources, and protocols. Digital transformation has long been introduced and is welcomed by the people and governments. The e-Congress will help address the challenge of making public governance more inclusive, encouraging and strengthening people's participation and empowerment. Developing a database will substantially transform public services, provide better coordination between both chambers and ensure alignment with national strategy. As more data, is shared and more secure, it can be synthesized into useful information for decision making. The shared power of legislation of the Senate and the House of Representatives, as it has been desired by the fundamental law of the land, is justified to exercise careful and diligent legislation, expand democratic processes, and secure orderly deliberation of both chambers of Congress. Where digital transformation has become inevitable, in the public sector. It is appropriate for Congress to invest resources to establish public digital infrastructure, to articulate strategies, and to integrate advances within the system of governance. Thank you 
I am honored to co-sponsor the measure. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. President. And the uh, Majority Leader, we'd yes. like to also thank uh, our distinguished minority floor leader, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel uh, III, for being a co-sponsor of this uh, e-Congress. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move that all members of the Senate be made co-authors of this resolution. So moved. There being no objection to the motion, the motion is approved. All members are now co-sponsors of the measure. Mr. President, I move. There being no other members who wishes to uh, Interpolate. Uh, amend or uh, introduce amendments, Mr. President, I move that we adopt Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7, subject to style. So move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, the Majority Floor Leader, Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 7 is hereby adopted. Mr. President, this juncture and with the permission of the body, I move to consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 507. This resolution pertains to the planned phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2023. I so move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, uh, I hear none. Therefore, the motion is approved. May we ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. Resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to strongly urge the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board to postpone the plant phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2023, pending the resolution of valid and urgent concerns raised by affected operators and drivers regarding the financial viability of the program. Mr. President, to sponsor the mission, may we recognize the distinguished lady from Pangasinan, Iloilo, in the Republic of the Philippines, <laughs> Senator Grace Poe to deliver her sponsorship speech. The distinguished lady senator, Senator Grace Poe, chairperson of the Committee on Public Services, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, hinihingi ko ang suporta ng buong Senado para prenohan ang tinakdang face out ng mga hari ng kalsada sa darating na ikatatlumpu ng Hunyo 2023. The planned face out is yet another sordid chapter in the PUV modernization program. I can say this with certainty as I chair the committee hearings which have generated enough transcripts to fill a jeepney. But to make the long story short, the PUV modernization program seeks to compel existing jeepney operators to consolidate and form fleets of 15 modern jeepneys, which will file routes established by lo local government units. Each modern jeepney costs 2.8 million pesos, which will be loaned and paid out of pocket. To speed up the policy, the LTFRB unilaterally converted all existing jeepney franchises into one-year provisional authorities. It is the most recent in the most recent memorandum circular 2023-13, the LTFRB imposed the, dead the deadliest deadline. Jeepney operators who have not joined an existing consolidated entity by June 30, 2023, or those who fail to file a petition to consolidate by October 30, 2023, will have their franchises revoked. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the LTFRB should be reminded that jeepney drivers do not have deep pockets. The most recent study estimates that the average daily take-home pay is a meager six, 755 pesos. Somehow, the LTFRB still expects a gold mine of capital to the tune of 2 million pesos per unit. Hiwalay pa ang cost just to consolidate. A news article estimates that jeepney operators must put up 300,000 pesos in paid up capital just to register as a transport cooperative. And here's the kick. The equity subsidy provided by the government is a measly 160,000 pesos, not a million, 180,000. Wala pa ito sa 7% ng bagong unit. Ginong Pangulo, apat na beses na nag-extend ang LTFRB ang kanilang deadline. Pero kahit kailan ay hindi naman nasagot ang mga reklamo sa programa tungkol sa subsidiya para sa equity ng mga bagong unit. To quote a recent study on the PUV modernization program, it has been too focused on vehicle replacement, sequencing in the implementation of the PUVMP is very critical. 
It could have started with regulatory reform, local route, formulation and submission, and route rationalization first before embarking on fleet modernization. This would have given stakeholders better appreciation of the program and additional grace period and more time for the operators, drivers to prepare. To implement this program, we need route rationalization. Taon-taon, tuwing nang hihingi ng budget para sa PUV modernization, ay hinihingi natin ang route rationalization plan. But DOTR just entered a three-year technical cooperation project with JICA in June 2022, only five years after the program was launched. Part of the JICA outputs is database of traffic volume as the basic information for the route rationalization plan in Metro Manila and assessment of existing and future routes of PUVs. Based on their 2023 budget submission, the route rationalization studies are still being finalized. Wala pa nga yun eh. Wala pang mga ruta na maaari nating sabihin. Bakit pinapahirapan ang mga driver at commuter kung hindi pa nga nagagawa ng gobyerno ang pag-aaral na ipinangako nito? To enforce a deadline is not only insanity but also inhuman. Hindi makatawa, Mr. President. It is contrary to the constitutional directive to promote social justice in all phases of national development. It is also contrary to the public welfare, as it will compound the acute shortage of public transportation modes in the country. Tignan na lamang natin ang pila tuwing rush hour, nagahabulan. Kulang tayo sa tren as the MRT3 is operating beyond capacity. The reported PNR shutdown to speed up construction of the north-south commuter rail will leave us its 180,000 daily passengers without a ride for at least five years. Kulang tayo sa bus as seen in the long queues even on the weekend. Pahirapan at tagaan din ang presyo ng grab. Pero parang bingi ang LTFRB sa kabila ng paghihirap na dinaranas ng mga commuter at drivers. If the LTFRB proceeds with the phase out, it might result to 50,000 jeeps being taken away, taken off the road. If transport groups proceed with a strike, that's at least 40,000 jeepneys off the street starting March 6. And speaking of social justice, we have a pending bill which seeks to provide a just and humane transition to the PUV modernization program. We are not against modernization. If we want, if anything, we want to make it easier to achieve. There's always a win-win solution, and that begins with a united stand from the Senate. We thus move for its adoption of proposed Senate resolution number 507, Mr. President. Thank you. May I, before, before we recognize, may I just ask a few fundamental questions to our uh, 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 our author of the sponsor, or sponsor of the measure. Just a few clarificatory questions to my distinguished colleague. With the permission, of course, of the body. Um, are you willing, ma'am, to uh, uh, yeah, Yes, sir. Thank you. Just yes, to ask, sir. when was the... Because we've been, I've been hearing the modernization program for my first term in the Senate in 2007. Ito ba date na March? Was that March? Is it June? Ah, June 30? No, June. Has that been extended already several times? Yes, Mr. President. It's been extended. Remember, this was a proposal back in 2017. And yes. they were saying that they had about a year after that. But then, Mr. President... Based on their proposal, was also a submission of a route rationalization plan. In short, yung mga ruta ng mga jeeps, para hindi yung sa isang lugar na napakaraming jeeps, sa iba naman kulang. So this was in conjunction with their cooperation with the local government. Eh hanggang ngayon, wala pang ang route rationalization plan. So ang gusto nila, i-modernize na ninyo, pero wala pang garantiya ng ruta. At magbabayad pa sila para sumama sa ko kooperativa. May I share some information because I used to be the chairman of the Committee on Cooperatives. So I would attend several. My vice chairman is nodding her head, Senator Hontiveros. We would we would have several meetings, uh, Madam Sponsor, uh, with uh, transport cooperatives. The problem is the local government units, because I spoke also to the LTFRB. The problem is the local government units, siguro magugustuhan to ni Idol Rafi, 
ayaw nila magbigay ng root rationalization plan which has to be approved kasi by the local government unit before it is actually given to the drivers. Because apparently, what I was told, no, and I'm, I'm, don't shoot the messenger, I was told that there are local government units who also want to operate themselves. In other words, my mayor na gusto din maglagay ng mga modern PUV na buses, my councillors na gusto din nilagay doon sa mga lugar nila, kaya hindi nila nabibigyan itong, hindi, nabibigyan, na, hindi na release yung ating root rationalization plan. So kawawa talaga itong mga jeepney drivers na ito dahil ang kalaban na nila is modernization, yung malaking gastos sa jeepney. Tapos ang kalaban pa nila, ang local governments, na gustong isarili, no? hindi ko sinasabi lahat, merong mga local governments, gusto nilang i-monopolize din para sa kanilang whatever, no? for whatever for whatever reason or prime or purpose. So, um, the point here being is, the good sponsor wishes that we, so that my co our dear colleagues in the Senate know, our good colleague here wishes that we postpone until there can be some sort of cushioning uh, on the part of uh, the jeepney drivers who cannot come up yet with the modern 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 jeepneys by june 30 how long do how long does the sponsor believe uh, we could give them in terms of uh, postponement because we cannot naman open end it uh, madam sponsor because we also want to see our roads modernized from uh, the old uh, 50 year old jeeps that ply the routes so do you envision, Madam Sponsor, a particular point in time, a period in time where, where we can actually uh, facilitate the full PUV modernization program? Mr. President, it's very difficult to give a timeline if the submission of the route rationalization is not uh, does not uh, materialize. Scenario. Because actually, there is a study that was given by JICA with regards to this, and they need to study that uh, proposal of JICA first. Now, as uh, the, your concern about the local government units um, not agreeing to to cooperate. I hear the bottlenecks are there. Yes. yes. I think that the OTR has to be more proactive and they should release a statement that this is our problem. Because if, if, if this is so, then I think the executive can intervene already in this case. And which, which will make me go to my next clarificatory question, ma'am. Is there a law that mandates that the, the road rationalization plan must be coming from the local government unit. Because if it's if there's a law, we really cannot uh, disregard the local government unit. But if there is an, an order, an administrative order, or an EO of some sort, that can be amended. So could you would you know the answer if there is a law that uh, mandates they come from the local government? Um, Mr. President, from I, I think uh, our good governor from, former governor from Sorsogon can talk uh, is more yes, our distinguished yes. colleague, the former governor, now Senator Francis Escudero. Yes, Mr. President, um, distinguished colleagues. Um, when I was governor, I think we were the only province in the Bicol region that had a root rationalization plan um, approved. Um, the bottleneck actually exists with respect to tricycle drivers because under the law, jeepneys are under the LTFRB, tricycles are under the local government unit, and a root rationalization plan must include both. In fact, even including buses, taking into account the size of the road, the distance of um, the schools, um, and other factors to be considered. So, um, in so far as um, the route rationalization plan for jeepneys are concerned, the DILG can issue a corresponding memorandum to local chiefs, ex chiefs of executive to actually finish it. In so far as jeepneys are concerned, yes. But if you're talking of the entire and um, comprehensive route rationalization plan, it should include both buses and um, tricycles. So maybe the good solution to that would be the DILG, we should also urge the DILG in this resolution to come up with a deadline as as, as suggested by a dear colleague from Sorsogon, but so that uh, they can move to the next step, which is the modernization. Mr. President, that's also a problem because there is no support. When we came up with it, we had to hire our own experts. Mm. There was no available expert from DOTR, LTFRB, that could teach us exactly what a root rationalization plan would look like, what it would entail, what it should contain. Wala pong ganun eh. But not only the root rationalization plan, Mr. President, um, distinguished sponsor, 
There's also a problem of financing. Each of these modernized jeepneys cost at least 2.3 million. Pag tinanong mo ang LTFRB, pinakamalaki nilang bibigay na subsidy ay 200,000, minsan 100,000, depende pa sa probinsya. Paano nila babayaran yung amortization? If the amortization is computed about 60,000 pesos to 70,000 pesos at least, agad wala nang kita if you compute the number of seat and seating capacity of these jeeps and the monthly amortization, wala na agad. Clearly, 100,000 will not suffice. Clearly, 200,000 will not suffice. And you were mentioning cushion a while ago. Clearly, also, there are no safeguards whatsoever with respect to drivers and including operators who will be displaced because of this supposed modernization. And this modernization, Mr. President, did not even go through the usual process. The Philippines is known for its jeepneys. And all of a sudden, overnight, they want to face it out and replacing it with these square-looking buses from China and Russia. The experience of Sir Sagan, Mr. President, is not so good because about half at least, about 60% if in fact, are already um, unusable after less than two years. Kinakahuyan na lang po ng PSA yung mga hindi na magamit. Kasi wala namang available na spare parts eh. Kasi yung mga pinoprovide nilang bus at pamalit ng mga jeep, wala, hindi naman Toyota, hindi naman Mazda, hindi naman Mitsubishi, wala namang spare parts na available sa so Banawi kung saan-saan. Galing lahat sa kanila at hindi namin alam kung saan galing. And these are being spoon-fed, I'm being polite, to the cooperatives. Um, ang dagdag pahira pa sa jeep, Mr. President, as you discussed kanina with Senator Risa, kailangan mong sumama sa kooperatiba, otherwise, hindi ka kasama sa programa. Saan naman yun? Saan naman nakalagay yun? Well, uh, if I may, no, to elucidate further the issue on the, the road, uh, the root rationalization plan, sa maraming hindi nakakaalam, kailangan po nila yun kasi as mentioned by yourself, the good sponsor, they have to know which route is the most profitable route. Kasi kung nalagay po sila sa outskirts ng city or ng town, hindi po sila nakikita. Ang gusto nila makita, the route rationalization plan sa loob ng, as you mentioned, near schools, near public places, dapat dumaan sila doon. Now, ayaw chicken or the egg scenario. Ayaw nila mag-modernize kung walang route rationalization plan. Ang problema pa, and I recall this very well because we had three hearings about transport cops with Secretary with Senator uh, Risa. They the pro the big problem is the banks don't also want to lend them without an approved route rationalization plan. Kasi okay na po yung DBP at Land Bank. Kausap namin yung DBP at Land Bank at sabi nila, Sir, may pera po kami. Mandate po namin ng Duterte administration na gawin ito. Ang problema nga, hindi nila ilalabas yung pondo kung walang root rationalization plan. So, ang ibibigay sana ng LTFRB, correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Sponsor, na 200,000 or 160,000 to 200,000, para sa down payment po yun sa land bank. Pag na down payment na po yan, ang babayaran na nila yung monthly amortization ng uh, cooperative or ng uh, individual driver. So, we're stuck to this point that without a root rationalization plan, they cannot avail of the loan, nor can they move forward to modernize kasi hindi po nila alam kung yung ruta nila ay magiging uh, sagabal ba sa kanila o kikita po sila sa ruta na yun. Mr. President. More or less, that's the picture that was painted to me. Mr. President, if, to I, me. if I may add uh, with regards to that, you were asking what is a reasonable time frame. Yes. And because we are discussing route rationalization. The study of JICA, which will be submitted, as mentioned by the governor from, former governor from Sorsogon, uh, some provinces cannot afford to fund the study. JICA will not have their proposed rationalization plan until three years after it commenced in 2022. So reasonably, we can expect 2022, 2023, or 2025 pa. Or Maybe without having to put a timeline, what you could say is the postponement until they comply with the route rationalization. I pattern. think so. Sir. But Mr. President, Mr. President, just to end it, may I, at the proper time, ask that these this this discussion, um, on top of approving or adopting the resolution filed by Senator Grace, be referred to the Committee on Public Services, as this, yes. I believe, um, needs an in-depth hearing on the matter so that all sides can be heard. 
and so that the striking jeepney drivers or those who are planning to strike next week, perhaps if given a forum, might um, hold it off as well. Because in a strike, agree. nobody really benefits from it, both yeah. the riding public as well as the drivers themselves. Thank you, Mr. President. the proper time, we'll do so. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, if I may, Mr. President, there's a list here. There's a long list. Mr. Okay, President Majority of, Leader, uh, please proceed. Of, uh, thank you. I'd like to thank the sponsor. Sponsor, thank you very much, Madam. Who would want to uh, manifest and uh, say something, Mr. President? I'd like to put on record, Mr. President, my uh, sincerest thanks and uh, express our full support to this, to this resolution filed by our distinguished colleague, Senator Grace Po, urging the LTFRB to postpone the planned phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2020. Mr. President, I have been raising this issue for quite some time. I sound like a broken record. And Senator Grace Po would, would uh, uh, attest to this. Every time she would come up with a hearing, for the past six years, Mr. President, I have been sounding this off, Mr. President. And uh, this is not the first time that we are uh, raising this issue. We raise this every budget deliberations of DOTR, of LTFRB. Unfortunately, yung last budget deliberation, yung LTFRB chief na nag-commit po sa atin, na wala na po ngayon, naging PCOO na po yata, if I'm not mistaken, siya na po yung head nun. We noted, Mr. President, that uh, this representation had received so many letters of uh, from constituents requesting for assistance because their PUVs were impounded after they were not able to pay their loans to modernize their PUVs. May mga iba naman po, hindi pa naman luma yung sasakyan nila pero pinofor sila na, na, na bumili ng modernized kuno na sasakyan na, na hindi naman humaayos, Mr. President. Ang masakit po dito, Mr. President, marami na po yung bumili ng modernized uh, na sasakyan gaya ng experience Ni Senator Chisa Sorsogon, nangyari na rin po sa Bulacan. Ang dami-dami na po na narimata na rin ng bangko. Ang dami-dami na po na hindi nakabangon. At hanggang ngayon, eh, hirap na hirap sa buhay. Mr. President, during the pandemic, this representation made a, 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 a plea to the OTR noon na magbigay ng tulong doon sa mga drivers, sa mga chopper na nandun sa... Tinuro ko pa kung saan lugar, ano-anong mga cooperatives, etc., Mr. President. Hindi po sila natulungan. And now, they're being forced. And tama po si Senator Grace po. Doon po sa amin, hanggang 2.4 million pa yung cost ng modernized jeepney. And Mr. President, this is not a joke. And ang problema, Mr. President, and I was about to mention this before Senator Escudero uh, took the floor, ganun din po yung nagiging problema nitong root rationalization plan. Kahit po gusto ng LGU, wala akong mga experts eh. Yung mga mayors nagtatanong sa akin, paano namin matutulungan, gusto namin gawin, pero walang tulong. The ILG is pushing them na magkaroon ng uh, uh, root rationalization plan, pero wala rin naman pong suporta. Ah. Again, Mr. President, marami pong issue ito. At isa sa pinakamabigat na issue dito, kahit nasabihin mo magmamodernize tayo, 2.4 million is not a joke. Saan hukukuha ng pera itong mga kababayan natin na lugmok na, nahirapan, hindi pa rin natulungan nung nakaraang may pandemya. Mr. President, this is a matter of justice, especially if there are no clear assistance from the government. Yung threat to the livelihood of our jeepney drivers, especially as they are still recovering from the pandemic and are also grappling with high fuel costs, Mr. President. And this will also affect the mobility of millions of our kababayans who rely on public transport system. I also would like to put on record, I know it's not part of the resolution, but I'm glad that uh, uh, Senator Cheese also uh, made mention, and I'm supporting it, that the speech of this distinguished lady from uh, Pangasinan, Iloilo, in the Republic of the Philippines will be referred to, his, to her committee so we can hear this because come December 2023, yung mga utility vehicles naman ang, 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 uh, ang ipi-face out, Mr. President, kahit na okay na okay pa na gamitin. At ang masakit po dito, Mr. President, binanggit ko na po ito ilang beses kay Senator Grace, dun sa Bulacan, Po-force ka, dapat meron kang uh, cooperative. Ipo-force ka rin, Mr. President, kung saan mo bibilin yung units. Wala kang ibang choice. Halatang-halata ito ng mafia to, Mr. President. O ngayon na natapos yung uh, last administration, may bagong administrasyon, eh, mga interesadong-interesado rin, kukumahog po yung mga mafia doon na sila naman. So we have to do our part and I'm glad that uh, this came out today. I'm supporting the resolution. I'm supporting the uh, conduct of hearing by the Committee on Public Services. 
We are not against modernization per se, Mr. President, but we're calling on LTFRB to be more considerate given the recent pandemic and the state of our economy, Mr. President. Napakaklaro, palpak po yung programa nila. Palpak, Mr. President. Palpak yung mga nakaraang programa. Palpak yung paggawa ng root rationalization program. Pinipilit gawin, walang eksperto, walang nakakaalam sinong gagawa. Walang tulong ang pamahalaan. Tapos ngayon, magdi-decide sila on their own, Mr. President. So I'm, I'm hoping and praying that uh, at the end of the day, we'll be able to help our kababayans, especially, Mr. President, yung mga nabiktima na. Paano silang babangon ngayon, Mr. President? And I'm glad na ngayon pinag-uusapan po natin ito sa bulwagang ito. With that, Mr. President, I end my manifestation and uh, also ask that uh, we recognize Senator uh, Rafi Tulfo for his manifestation. Um, Mr. President, before that, I, I would like to respond to Senator Joel. Yes, I would gladly... I, I think that it's crucial that we hear this as soon as possible. So if the minority leader will agree... Uh, for us, because usually there's a three-day rule, but if we can rehear it by Thursday, hopefully we can come up with a, a resolution so that the strike will not push through uh, by, by Monday next week. Uh, normally, we will have the three-day rule, but maybe we can hear by Thursday. With the permission of the minority floor leader, and I don't see him violently reacting okay. for that particular issue. It's a, a national concern because it's a we would like to avert a nationwide strike. Body. Yes, Mr. President. With the permission of the body. Yes, uh, the body is agreeing, Mr. President, to the uh, suggestion. And uh, we are all uh, one, Mr. President, in ensuring that uh, we'll be able to help out in uh, any way we can, Mr. President. At this juncture, Mr. President, may I uh, move that we uh, recognize Senator Rafi Tulfo, Mr. President. Next, Mr. President, is Senator Bato, Senator Toll, Senator Wynn, Senator Risa, Senator Pia, and Senator Jingle. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Good afternoon, we recognize Sen Senator Rafi Tulfo. Grace Paul, I would like to commend you and your passionate and uh, in pursuing this resolution for our hardworking jeepney drivers. Mr. President, ang bottom line dito sa nakikita ko ay <coughs> salapi. May mga gustong kumita. Unang-una na dyan. They're now salivating. Tumutulo ng lawan ito mga taga-LTFRB na atat na atat ng kumita ng mga pilak. God knows who does not pay. Alam niyo po yung sa jeepney? Nakalagay? God knows who does, who does not pay. Maraming mga hudas. Yes, na gustong yumaman. Gustong tumibati ba? At the expense of the mga pobreng jeepney drivers. Just imagine 2.4 million po ang halaga ng isang, yung modernized jeep na sinasabi nila. At 300,000 naman po ang mabibigyan ng subsidy. So, 2.1 million po ang kailangang pagbabayaran ng mga jeepney drivers. Alam naman po ng mga taga-LTFRB kung magkano lang po kinikita ng isang jeepney driver sa maghapon. Ang marami sa kanila, hindi pa nga po makabuo ng boundary. Ang ilan sa kanila, isang kahit isang tuka. Dahil nga po, mahina ang kita. Pagkatapos, kakaragahan ng 2.1 million pesos na babay o problemahing babayaran, ang kakapal ng mga mukha nito, mga nagtutululaway ng mga taga-LTFRB. At tama kayo, Mr. President, I agree with you. Yung mga taga-LGU, ay kanya-kanyang diskarte. Ay magbigay ng rota, dahil gusto nilang sariliin yung rota, kailan dumaan sa kanila. I have so many experiences, hindi naman po lahat, itong mga taga-LGU, gustong kumita. Hinuhuli po yung mga jeepney drivers. Hinuhuli po yung mga tricycle sapagkat gusto nilang magkaroon ng sarili nilang unit. Gusto nilang maging mga operators. Marami din sa mga taga-LGU, again, hindi naman po lahat na mga loko-loko, unfortunately. Sa halip na kaawa ng kanilang mga constituent, mga taong bumoto sa kanila, yung pang kanilang mga ginigipit. FYI, mga taga-LTFRB, ang jeepney po ay parte na ng ating kultura. As a matter of fact, ang iba, mga taga-ibang bansa, pinupuri po ang ating mga jeepney. At ginagamit po ito bilang tourist attraction sa kanilang lugar. Ipinagmamalaki ang jeepney natin. Pagkatapos, tayo ipipace out natin ang ganun-ganun na lamang. Ang kakapal na mukha nito mga taga-LTFRB. Ang kakapal na mga mukha nitong ilan mga taga-LGU. Hindi nag-iisip 
Ang tanging iniisip lamang po nila, Mr. President, ang kanilang bulsa and adding insult to injury, saan galing, saan manggagaling itong mga jeepney? Galing ng China! Na kung saan, itong mga taong ito, ang hanggang ngayon, even while we speak, ay tuloy-tuloy na inapi ang ating mga mangingisda. Pagkatapos sa pinati mga ngisda, tutulungan natin sila na para kumita, pagkakitaan, ang mga jeepney drivers para kumita ang mga INUTIL na mga taga LTFRB. <laughs> Mr. President, baka marami pa akong masasabi, bago ako ma blood, ang sasabihin ko lang, LTFRB, maghunos dili kayo. Dahil kapag hindi, pare pareho tayong sasabog, believe me or not. Maraming salamat, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. distinguished colleague. Just a reaction. Uh, thank you, Senator Tulfo, for your passionate speech. I, I know that you feel for the least of our countrymen. Alam niyo po, tama yung sinabi din ni Senator Cheese at ni Senator Tulfo. Pag itong mga binibiling mga modernized jeep na to, nasira, wala namang mga dealers na yan dito. Eh. So yung mga parts, pahirap pa ng pagkuha. Naalala rin yung mga Mahindra. No, of course. Diba? Naging problema din yan. Diba? Bakit tayo nagsisettle sa ganun? So, yun, yun nga, parang merong gustong kumita. Kaya sa hearing, gusto ko rin matanong, sino ba ang nagbibigay ng accreditation sa mga ko kooperatiba? At paano nila... Kasi bago ka sumali sa ko kooperatiba, sasabihin sa'yo, oh, pero i-modernize mo yung jeep mo. Dito, dito mo lang bibilin. So, may mga, diba? May, meron ng mga connection sila. So, yun lamang po. Sir President, next to... Uh, uh... Next is uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Mr. President. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Our distinguished colleague from the province of Davao del Sur in Mindanao, Senator Bato de la Rosa, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, Mr. President, before I, I read my manifestation, I just would like to <clears throat> encourage the Chairman of Public uh, Services Nasana uh, during... Uh, her investigation into this uh, issue, establish natin yung sinasabi ni Senator uh, uh, Majority Leader na may mapya na sa likuran ito. So, kawawa naman yung mga mga malilit na driver natin na ma mahirap na nga, mamapyahin pa ng sarili niyang gobyerno. Eh kung totoo itong may mapya, dapat malaman natin ito at uh, tulungan natin itong uh, investigahan para malaman natin. Kasi there, there seems to be a scheme, a scheme of everything. Pamimbro ka muna ng, uh, ng kooperatiba, din pagkatapos sa membro, hindi ka magiging membro kapag walang, uh, hindi ka mag-procure uh, nung yung jeep na modernized jeep. So sana ma-establish natin ito kung sino itong mga uh, mafia na ito. And uh, Mr. President, I stand before you today to join this August Chamber in calling the land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board to defer the scheduled phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2023. The Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program of the Department of Transportation and the LTFRB has the most notable intention, and that is to provide a safe, convenient, contemporary, and state-of-the-art public transportation system. We in the government are doing our best to provide the riding public a hassle-free public transportation experience. However, we should be realistic in fulfilling this dream and acknowledge the difficulties that lie ahead. Ginoong Pangulo, kaisa po ninyo ako sa paghangad ng modernong pamamaraan at palakad ng pampublikong transportasyon. Ngunit, kailangan natin isalang alang ang limitasyon at hirap na hinaharap ng mga driver na mga tradisyonal na jeepneys na namamayagpag sa ating mga daan sa maraming dekada na nakalipas. Traditional jeepneys, otherwise known as the king of the roads, have been the significant symbol of our busy streets in Manila. Even in the provinces, the size of these iconic commu commuters to the respective workplaces and to reach their families back home after a day's work. Sa kagustuhan natin na mabigyan ng modernong mukha 
ang ating mga jeepney sa lansangan, na isa, naiisip ba natin ang magugugol na halaga na mga drivers, operators at maging mga local manufacturers para maisakatuparan ang tinakdang programa ng DOTR at LTFRB para sa modernisasyon ng public pampublikong sasakyan. Hirap. <laughs> Nagkabulol-bulol tuloy ako to. We in the Senate are not insensitive to the plight of our drivers, operators, and local manufacturers. With the economic crisis brought by the pandemic, the transportation sector suffered much from the economic losses brought by COVID-19. With this in mind, at most consideration, therefore, should be the burden that we pass on to our partners in the public transportation sector. Hence, I add my voice in appealing to the LTFRB to give more time to carry out the phase out of our traditional jeepneys. Today, more than ever, our compassionate hearts should speak louder than the call of modernization. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Distinguished Thank you, Mr. President. Just a quick reaction to the uh, statements made by our dear colleague, my good friend, Senator Bato de la Rosa. I actually wanted to put on record, Mr. President, that no less than the Secretary of the OTR himself, Secretary Tugade, before the, before the pandemic, Mr. President, told me, told our staff in my office, here in this August chamber, Mr. President, sa kanya mismo nang galing, ang daming mafia dyan. May mga mafia dyan. May mga korap dyan. Korap dyan sa LTFRB. I just wanted to put that on record, Mr. President, that uh, it's not just me, but even the, uh, the then DOTR Secretary made mention of that words, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator. Mr. President, I would also like to express uh, my... I, I would like to recognize that... No, I would like to say that Senator Joel has always been active in our hearings. That's why all that he's saying is from uh, his stock memory of what transpired. In fact, he was the one that uh, brought out the issue that in his province, there are those that invested already in the modernization in anticipation that the modernization will be fully implemented, bought already units yeah. to sell, but since... Uh, you know, the, the drivers themselves don't have money to buy the units. The, the ones that uh, anticipated and invested already lost money. Diba? Lumubog na yung negosyo nila. So that's, that's all, Mr. President. I'd like to thank our majority leader also for, for taking active um, uh, study and notice on this uh, particular issue. Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, Madam Chair. Mr. President, next to uh, make a uh, manifestation is the uh, distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator uh, Francis Tolentino. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Our uh, distinguished colleague from Cavite, Senator Francis Tolentino, is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I, I think the, the sponsor just left the hall. Oh, please. Uh, just two questions. Just a Sorry. quick manifestation and perhaps uh, two mini questions, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, uh, as a as a Caviteño, Mr. President, I joined the. I think we should suspend for a minute, uh, Mr. President. I joined the good sponsor in advocating the restoration of the dignity of our jeepney drivers. My former life involved me several years uh, in having daily engagements with Fedjudap, Altudahap, Pasang Mazda, etc., etc. And, and Piston. And Mr. President, as a Caviteño, I grew up in an era wherein Leonardo Sarau from Silang Cavite was really, was really the king of jeepney manufacturing, Mr. President. And the same is true with Malagasang jeepney coming from EMOS, Mr. President. So, naniniwala po ako na kailangan bigyan po ito ng second look. But just the same, Mr. President, I'd like to pose these two questions, lingering questions, which probably would be answered during the committee hearing to be conducted, or perhaps today, if the good uh, lady sponsor would uh, yield. Mr. President, how much was the government expenditure, if 
any, how, how, what is the total amount if there were contracted loans made concerning this jeepney modernization program? It's the first. Second, was there a revision of the current car manufacturing program to include a hybrid jeepney modernization program? The reason, I, the reason why I'm asking this is because I've seen several versions. I've seen a, a van as big as a poster with, with the nameplate jeepney. I've seen a minibus with, uh, designated as jeepney. I've seen a, a, a bigger version of a jeep uh, with an inscription, e jeepney. So is there a, was there a revision of our existing car manufacturing program to include this program? Thirdly. Mr. President, uh, yes. I would like to thank our colleague from Cavite. In fact, these are precisely the questions we'd like to ask in the hearing because they haven't been updating us for so long. Uh, yun nga, tama sinabi niyo, there's no uniformity <laughs> or, or somehow it's based on the discretion of the cooperative. And number two, um, yun nga, I, with, with, uh, with what you're saying uh, about the, the hybrid part, Diba kasi bago na, baka naman by the time ma-modernize, hindi na modern yung Euro 4 nila, diba? So, yun, yun, we will ask. And how much did they loan to these uh, uh, cooperate or how much was already disbursed uh, in terms of loans or or support, uh, what do you call this, um, support for the jeepney drivers, how much was the total? We will get that total, hopefully, from Land you, Bank, DBP, and as well as the OTR. Thank you, Mr. President. Thirdly, perhaps, were there importations processed or importa imported knockdown vehicles on the way dubbed as jeepneys? Because during my MMDA days, Mr. President, I have seen several exhibits of various versions of jeepneys, uh, different sizes, different shapes, all claiming to be the modern jeep. Uh, are there current importation programs underway or approved uh, previously, which would impact on this uh, program as, as properly explained by the good lady sponsor. Those three questions probably, if answered during the committee hearings, would perhaps simplify and uh, explain to our colleagues why this process should, should be stopped, should be uh, improve or should uh, be given a longer transition period? That's all, Mr. President. Maraming salamat po sa inyong oras. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, with our colleagues raising all of these different issues, it's clear that June 30 of this year is not a reasonable deadline. Thank you, Mr. President. Next to uh, Thank make you a much. short manifestation is the distinguished gentleman from uh, Valenzuela City. Senator Sherwin Gachelli, I move that he be recognized. A city that has a lot of jeepneys also. Yes, Thank yes you, Mr. Mr. President. Nice, our distinguished colleague, Senator Gachelli. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, initially when the, this modernization program was uh, implemented, um, I found merit in the modernization program, Mr. President. Uh, number one, it will... Uh, uh, it will uh, transition the old jeepney vehicles to a much more modern, fuel efficient, as well as environmentally friendly. Uh, if Euro 4 is considered a little bit more friendlier than uh, the usual diesel, uh, it will increase the carrying capacity of our traditional jeeps from 12 to 20 passengers to about 30 to 40 passengers. But the most important, Mr. President, is the rationalization of the routes. That's the most important because to date, I remember, and this is uh, the time when uh, Senator Tolentino was our chairman of the MMDA, to date, uh, there is no, as far as I'm concerned, there is no official uh, passenger count per route. And it's very difficult to count uh, passengers per route. So, in other words, coming up with a root rationalization plan really takes a lot of uh, effort and science to, to come out with that. But I found merit in the modernization program, Mr. President. But 
the business plan of the modernization program has been thrown off, way off uh, the original proposal. And one important reason to that, Mr. President, is the increase in fuel cost because of the Russian invasion. Uh, during the 2017 unveiling of this rationalization program, a portion of the fares earned by the uh, by the jeepney drivers will go to the payment of uh, the modern jeeps. Uh, at that time, Mr. President, the cost of uh, fuel is about 20 to 30 US dollars per barrel. Right now, Mr. President, it's hovering around 80 to 90 dollars per barrel. And we can see per liter cost of diesel and gasoline hovers around 60 to 70 pesos. So the take home pay of our drivers have has gone down dramatically, Mr. President. So, paano ho nila babayaran pa yung modernization kung ang presyo po ng crudo ay napakataas at patuloy na tumataas dahil hindi pa ho tapos yung Russian invasion. And it can spike up uh, until the threat of a uh, global disruption uh, is there, uh, prices of fuel can go up. Go up. So, Mr. President, I, I support the call of our good chairman, uh, of the Public Service Committee to look into this matter very carefully and have a longer hearing, Mr. President, because the business model has been thrown off by the increase in fuel. And uh, ngayon ho, uh, ang, ang, ang naiipit po sa gitna ay ating mga dri jeepney drivers. No? Dahil hindi naman nila kontrolado ang crudo, hindi naman nila kontrolado ang presyo ng langis. At uh, sila po'y naiipit sa pagbabayad po nitong modernization program. So dapat po na ng masusi at mabuti kung, kung yung business model ba right now is applicable pa o hindi na. So I, I commend the uh, uh, good uh, sponsor for uh, bringing this to forth. Thank you, Mr. President. As before, I rec we recognize uh, the next, uh, 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 next colleague who would like to give his manifestation. May I just share? that when I had that meeting with Phil Oldrich, and they're actually, the good news is, they're setting up shop in Clark, the American EVT company. Yeah. They're coming, they played basketball with your team, uh, majority floor yeah. leader. They're very happy, they're going to move their manufacturing facility here. It's called EVT, you, you Google it, it's the largest producer of electric vehicles in the United States for public utilities. And they were telling me, why don't you do electric jeepneys? It will bring down the cost by 80% because not a single drop of fuel is needed. They can just set up in their cooperative, in their headquarters, or even their homes, the plug, uh, yung plug and uh, charge, parang cell phone, and then pull out, and it can, you can use it the whole day. Maybe that's, I, and according to them, the price is competitive. So if it's, uh, he, he mentioned to me, he can compete with any cost of, uh, those Fuso, Isuzu, mini buses, kaya daw nila, kasi it'll be manufactured here. Maybe that's a good model, and I, and I thought about this because the good gentleman who just spoke used to be the chairman of the Committee on Energy, and I know he's the author, uh, Senator Gachalian is the author of the e-vehicles program. So maybe looking at that, at, uh, at the same price, vis-a-vis, -vis, no? one bus na... 2.3 million, one electric vehicle na 2.3 million, it might make more sense to get the electric vehicle, your honors, because they will have no cost whatsoever in terms of fuel. Ang laki ng savings nila at kita nila dyan for the information of the body. Mr. President, yeah, thank you for raising that. Perhaps we can invite a representative of theirs to join our hearing to propose, or maybe they're not ready yet, but uh, at, at a later time, maybe to present to our committee. Yes. Uh, so we can also submit that yes. to DOTR, for them to meet with DOTR. Because, you know, the gentleman from Valenzuela raised something really important, that at the start of, the, of this rationalization program was 2017, and the price of... Uh, fuel was so much cheaper than now. So that's also something that we need to be able to consider. And also what Senator Tulfo raised, that, you know, the character of the Jeep is also uh, what um, encourages tourism and makes us unique. So maybe the, the drawings and it should be... And just a final note on the E-Jeep e There are already e jeepneys by the way, flying. You can get vehicles, GET, get. They do that, they're flying routes now all over the Philippines. They are launching this week in Cagayan de Oro. And those are electric uh, jeepneys.
Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Next to ask questions or and make a manifestation, a manifestation is uh, Senator Risa Tiveros. I move that she be recognized. Our distinguished colleague, Senator Risa Tiveros, the Deputy Minority Floor Leader, is recognized. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Just a very brief manifestation. Uh, nice ko lang pong dagdagan ng isang punto yung recollection ng uh, good Senate President kanina tungkol nga po dun sa mga pagdinig natin dati kasama ng, ng mga transport cooperatives. Patungkol mismo dito sa uh, PUV modernization program. Naalala ko po at that time, yung uh, uh, root uh, rationalization program was called the PTRP, Public Transport uh, Route Plan. At yung isa pang problema po na isinumbong sa atin, uh, Mr. President, nung mga jeepney drivers noon, at kahit mga transport cooperatives na, ay uh, kung daw hindi nila kaalyado, yung chair ng transport committee sa local uh, yes. government unit, minsan nagiging isang factor din yon na napahihirapan yung pagkuha nila ng PTRP na yon. At bakit naging importante yung PTRP? Because it was a belated additional requirement of the banks para makapagpautang o makapag-utang ang transport co-op para nga makapasok dun sa PUV modernization program ng gobyerno. So sinasabi po nila kahit noon, gusto naman nilang pumasok sa PUV modernization program, pero required pa sila magbuo ng transport cooperative. At kahit dun sa mga kusa ng uh, organisado bilang transport co-op, nadagdagan pa ng mga requirements sa banko para makapagkuha ng loan. Na kailangan talaga dahil gaya ng ipinakita ng a uh, gentle one from Pangasinan and Iloilo ay napakaliit ng subsidy uh, less than 10% nung kakailanganin para makapag-convert talaga to uh, the modern uh, Egyptians and last of all uh, Mr. President kaugnay nung isang punto na ni raise nung uh, good gentleman from Valenzuela na economic crisis uh, pa rin ngayon instigated also by the Russian invasion of the Ukraine at ito, uh, uh, input uh, ni Minority Leader Pimentel, pati interest rates ay tumaas na rin. So lalong para, paanong magiging sustainable sa mga uh, jeepney drivers organized into transport cooperatives who will have to take out loans uh, in order to modernize their public utility jeeps. So sa ilang pang mga dahilang ito, uh, Mr. President, kasama ng mga nabanggit na ng mga kasama, lalong importante at urgent na masuportahan nating lahat uh, yung resolution ng Good Gentlewoman from Pangasinan. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Distinguished Colleague. Majority Leader. Mr. President, next to make a manifestation is uh, Santa P. Caetano. I move that she be recognized. Thank you. Distinguished Colleague, Santa Caetano is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I join my colleagues in expressing concern uh, over this issue. I commend the chairperson, uh, Senator Grace Po, for bringing up this, uh, taking up this resolution. Um, although this, this starts with a transportation issue, what I'd like to point out, which our colleagues have already discussed, is that this affects not just transportation, obviously it affects uh, the jeepney drivers and their families, and this goes directly to SDG number one, which is no poverty. Uh, clearly, uh, our jeepney drivers are uh, contributing to our economy, and therefore this also includes SDG number eight, decent work and economic growth. But, Your Honors, they cannot contribute to economic growth when they do not have decent work, when they will be losing their jobs. And so, uh, Her Honor does not have to hurry. She can take her time because I won't ask her questions. I will just be making this manifestation. So, I want to put on record, Your Honor, that as we discuss uh, the issue on sustainable transportation, which I would assume is the objective of the OTR, uh, people's lives are affected, and that's where SDG 1 and SDG 8 come in. Um, but I'd also like to put on record, uh, our former chairman of the Committee on Energy will recall that during his hearings on electric vehicles, I had pointed out the importance of the jeepneys in our traditions and culture. Uh, the jeepneys, as everyone, um, I think, I think everyone here uh, will still recall that most jeepneys of our youth were decorated lavishly in uh, 
very vivid colors are representing different aspects of Filipino culture and life. And time and again, when, when uh, we talk about uh, the, the, the transition to e-vehicles, I would always point out that two things. Um, the Philippines has had the unique opportunity to transition after World War II, these vehicles that were used during the war, into what became everyday transportation. So that in itself, the jeepney itself as a structure is part of our culture and traditions. And then the art that goes on these jeepneys, again, form part of our art and our culture. Does it mean that we do not move forward, that we do not innovate? No, that is not uh, what it means. But it means that we shouldn't, what, what I'm trying to say is we shouldn't leave behind this amazing uh, representation of our culture that we have created. Uh, and and uh, this innovation that happened, what, maybe half a century ago or more, is something we should seriously consider. When the government determines that it will subsidize the jeepney drivers with a measly 160,000 uh, when the total cost is uh, 2 million, it's a joke, Your Honors. It does not uh, clearly allow these jeepney drivers to make a decent living. And it is it is contrary to SDG number eight, which we are committed to. We are committed. We are a signatory to these SDGs, Your Honors. And um, let's recognize that these innovations were made by various Filipino companies. Um, our colleague uh, from Cavite, Senator Tolentino, mentioned Sarao. Uh, the other industry that I remember, the other company that I remember is Francisco Motors, and I know there are others. Um, and has the government thought of, of um, supporting these companies so that they can continue to innovate and thrive uh, during this time? I, these are questions that um, I hope can also be tackled, Your Honors, in the coming hearings. So on that note, um, I'd like to point out one more SDG. This is Sustainable uh, Cities and Communities. Obviously, when we think of uh, sustainable cities, our vision, our walkable cities, bikeable cities, the Senate has done their part, we've passed that bill. And then we think of sustainable transportation as a whole. Um, uh, public transportation that is easily accessible to the public would include trains, buses, and they can include uh, jeepneys or whatever we want to transition into, but it must always consider that sustainability, this particular SDG 11, also includes customs and traditions. And so um, my, uh, my fervent hope is that we include this in our discussions uh, in the coming hearings. And again, I thank Her Honor for taking this up and bringing this to our attention. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Pia, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, next to uh, make a manifestation and ask questions is a uh, distinguished uh, gentleman from Saman. Senator Jigastad, I move that be recognized. We recognize the gentleman from San Juan, the better one, mm. Senator uh, Jingoy Strada. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, distinguished colleagues, I am strongly associating myself with the uh, manifestation made by our colleague and most especially by the chair, my kinakapatid, my comadre, Senator Grace Poe. With the indulgence of the author, I would like to request to be made co-author and co-sponsor of Senate Resolution Number 507, entitled the resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to strongly urge the LTFRB to postpone the planned phase out of all traditional jeepneys by June 30, 2023, pending the resolution of valid and urgent concerns raised by affected operators and drivers regarding fi the financial viability program. Although we believe that it is imperative that we implement the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program, hindi dapat ito magsilbing lubid na bibigti sa kanila. Pare pa Kundi lubid na magliligtas sa kanila at ihila sa kanila sa pangangalaga at paggabay ng ating pamalan. Our public transport sectors caters to the most number of Filipinos, ang masang Pilipino. Patuloy silang pumapasada sa kabila ng hagupit na tumataas pang presyo ng krudo at ng mga pangunahing bilhin. Kahit nakakarampot ang nauwing kinikita ng ating mga namamasada, 
ay hindi sila tumitigil sa kanilang responsibilidad sa masang Pilipino na sa kanila umaasa para sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na transportasyon. Kaya panahon na upang sila naman ang isakay natin sa maginhawang buhay. I am also of the belief that certain considerations have to be made. Bumabangon pa lamang tayo sa pandemya at napakahira po ng buhay ngayon. Malinaw naman ang posisyon at panawagan ng ating sektor ng transportasyon at sangayon po ako sa ating chairperson ng Committee of Public Services upang ipaglaban muli ang, ang implementasyon ng phase-out nito. Maraming salamat po, Ginong Pangulo. Yes, um, Mr. President, next to speak is uh, the gentleman from Bicol to make a manifestation. Senator Robin Padilla, I move that he be recognized. He recognized Senator Robin Padilla. Aaudu billahi minas shaitanur rajim. Maraming salamat po sa ating uh, pinunong uh, minorya at uh, ginoong pangulo. Uh, alam niyo po, una, ako po ay uh, gusto ko pong mapasali at uh, makasama po sa napakagandang panukala ng ating uh, uh, ginang uh, mula po sa dugo ng hari ng pelikulang Pilipino, Senadora Grace po. At uh, napaka-tapang po ng uh, panukala nito sapagkat alam nyo, ginoong Pangulo, ang jeepney sa ating inang bayang Pilipinas, tama po yung nakaligay doon, eh, traditional. Pero yung po bang ibig sabihin ng traditional na yun, eh, ano po ba? Sapagkat ito po ay simbolo ng ating uh, pagsuporta sa amang Amerikano. Dahil kung natatandaan nyo po, World War II itong mga jeep na ito, na minana natin, ginawa nating transport system after World War II at naging simbolo ito ng ating pakikipagkaibigan sa Amerikano. Kaya nandun yun, yung tradisyonal. At ako po ay naging model din ng uh, uh, panahon na ito, yung modernization ng jeepney. Ako po'y gumawa ng commercial dyan at uh, ini-endorso po natin yan. Napakaganda po nito na mawala na tayo doon sa usapin ng tayo ay uh, surplus ng Amerikano. Napakaganda po sa ng simbo sim simbolism noon kung maging modernized na tayo. Ang tanong lang po, handa na po ba talaga ang ating uh, transport uh, group dito? Katunayan po, Ginoong Pangulo, ang nakalagay po dito, dapat, dapat, sila ay uh, inorganize na ng cooperative magkaroon ng cooperative transport. Ang tanong, nagawa po ba yan? Eh, sa amin pong hearing na ginawa ng atin pong uh, uh, ginang uh, senadora Amy Marcos, eh, wala pa pong nagagawa ang, uh, ang pag-organisa uh, ng transport group para magkaroon ng kooperatiba. Kaya tama lang po ang sinasabi ng ating uh, mahal na ginang Senadora Grace po na ipagpaliban muna po ito. Dapat gawin muna po ng mga ahensya ng gobyerno yung pag-organize nitong mga jeepney driver para sila po ay magkaroon ng pagkakataon na makabili na magkaroon nitong mga modernized na jeep. Dahil hanggat wala po talaga yung kooperatiba, mananatili pong pangarap itong tinatawag nating modernisasyon. Kaya sana po Uh, uh, sa pamamagitan ng panukala na ito ay makatukpo natin ang CDA, ang Cooperative Development natin sa Pilipinas para sila po ay umaksyon na at ma-organize na po yung ating mga jeepney driver. Yung lamang po, maraming salamat po sa inyo, Ginoong Pangulo. Um, maraming salamat uh, sa ating uh, napakasipag at uh, Matapang rin na uh, kasama dito sa Senado at palagi mong pinibigyan mong pugay ang aking ama. Malaking bagay sa akin yun. Um, gusto pa lang pong sabihin na dun sa sinasabi niyang simbolo ng mga ng, na ating kultura, uh, itong mga, mga bigay sa atin ng Amerikano na jeeps, totoo po yun. 
Pero ang nangyari rin, naging kultura na rin natin kasi dinagdagan natin ang mga disenyo at kung ano-ano pa. Parang halimbawa na lang yung Christ, Christianity, di ba? Uh, yan po ay dala ng mga Kastila dito na alam naman natin ay tayo ay um, inalipin, ba? Ang tawag doon? O sin, sinaklo, sin, sinakop ng tatlong daang taon, di ba? Pero... Kahit pa paano ito ay naging parte na, na, na rin ng ating kultura. At um, kaya para, para naman sa akin, tama yun din yung sinabi ni Senator Pia, sana naman wag naman alisin din ang karakter nitong mga jeeps na to. Um, kaya maraming salamat din kay Senator Robin kasi napakalawak ng kanyang pangunawa dito na nakikita niya magandang intensyon nito kaya pinomote niya noon. At kaya lang, yung mga nasa likod nitong programa na to ay hindi sinipaga ng trabaho nila. Kaya, hindi talaga tayo handa ngayon. So, nakikita niyo yun, kahit na noon ay inendorso natin ng isang bagay, pero nakita natin, teka muna, mapapasubo tayo para lang mapapahamak tayo pagka inimplementa natin. So, uh, salamat sa manifestation ni Senator Robin. Yes, Mr. President. Next, uh, last to make the manifestation is a uh, gentleman from Davao. Senator Bongo, I move that he be recognized. We recognize Senator Bongo. Magandang araw po, Mr. President, and my uh, distinguished uh, colleagues. I am one with Senator Po, our colleagues and our kababayans in raising the issue of jeepney face-out in several parts of the country. Mr. President, for the past uh, decades, we have been dependent on POJs and POVs to help us our commute. Uh, with our commute uh, every day, naging parte na rin po ito ng ating kultura bilang Pilipino ang pagsakay ng jeep at karaniwan din po ginagamit na simbolo ang jeep na i-represent ang ating bansa. Katunayan lang po na ang jeepney ay parte na rin po ng ating buhay bilang uh, Pilipino. Uh, kung kaya naman po, Mr. President, I personally appeal that the LTFRB delay the phase out of our jeepneys let us give our jeepney drivers enough time to adjust and comply with the changes that this new policy will require. Pag wala na pong jeepney, parang wala na po tayo sa Cubao, parang wala na tayo sa Quezon Avenue, wala na tayo sa Pilipinas. At uh, ako mismo noon po ay uh, sumasakay talaga ng jeepney dyan sa I. Rodriguez, sa Kamyas, sa Kamuning. At uh, naabutan ko pa yung jeepney erap. Hanggang ngayon, Inabutan na lang ng uh, jeep ni JB at uh, jeep ni Jingoy. Uh, so, na, nakagawian na po natin. Anyway, ang, uh, uh, when our jeepney drivers uh, suffer, our commuters suffer with them. Sa pagbabagong idudulot ng modernisasyon na ito, our commuters will also have to adjust their budgets to afford new means of transportation. At kapag nagkaroon po ng malawakang strike ang ating jeepney at UB drivers sa iba't ibang parte ng bansa, mas lalo pong mahirapan ang ating mga commuters na umaasa po sa public transportation araw-araw. Karamihan po sa mga drivers ay may binubuhay po at uh, pinapakain. Mr. President, basta wala pong maiwan at magrabyado, while we understand the need to evolve given newer challenges of the environment, climate change and the economy, let us not transfer the burden to the poor who need our help. Importante din po ang safety ng pasahero sa usapan dito, ngunit wag natin pabayaan ang mga ordinaryong jeepney drivers na wala po silang matakbuhan o pambili ng bagong pampubliko nga sasakyan. Lalo na ngayon, di pa tayo tapos sa krisis na dulot ng COVID-19. Huwag po natin pababayaan ating mga jeepney drivers na karamihan po ay mahirap. Maraming salamat po, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank yes, you. Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Bongo, for your manifestation. Ito yung programa, uh, nung nakaraang administrasyon, pero nakikita niya na hindi pa tayo handa sa ngayon. So I appreciate also his open-mindedness uh, with regards to the matter. Thank you. Mr. President, the Deputy Majority Leader, Senator J.V. Ehers, is seeking the floor. I move that she, he be recognized, Mr. President. We recognize the uh, good one. At this this time, uh, Senator J. Versito. Thank you, Mr. President. Just uh, to manifest my support to uh, the resolution filed by uh, my, the Chair of the Committee on Public Services. As Vice Chair, um, I'd like to commend her for always uh, being right on time no, in filing these uh, import, very important issues. And I, I, I agree with her that it, it is not the right time 
to uh, to uh, rush no the, the modernization program not because there's still a lot of problems there, there's still a long way to go before we can really realize that we can uh, it is really uh, that we can realize that the modernization program the jeepney modernization program can be really, really realized no not at this time also that we are still uh, there's still ongoing construction in full swing of the north south commuter line the other railway projects no mrt at the same time with the pnr um, halting its operations uh, to give way to the modern railway uh, i i think it is time the the resolution of the chair of the committee of public services is in the at the right time because um um we have to look also into the plight of our jeepney drivers and at the same time not unless we are already able to see that uh the jeepney modernization program is really in full swing and uh, in, uh attainable then that's the only time we can really um give a time frame to really face face out and also i mean i mean i'd like to reiterate that as we await the completion of the ma major mass transit and railway projects i think the our jeepneys no, has to continue their operations that's all mr president thank you thank you thank you to our very helpful and competent vice chair of the Pub committee on public services um actually our work is a little bit uh we're able to handle so much work also because of our very industrious vice chairman thank you Thank you, Mr. President. With that, uh, Mr. President, and with the permission of the body, I move that all members of the Senate be made co-authors of this uh, resolution. So move, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion is carried. Mr. President, no other member wishes to uh, ask any further questions and uh, propose any amendments. I therefore move that we adopt proposed Senate Resolution Number 507, subject to style. So moved, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, reiterating the earlier motion of uh, Senator Escudero in this representation, that the discussions on this uh, matter be referred to the uh, Committee on Public uh, Services. I therefore move, Mr. President, that um, all the manifestations, interpolations, and discussions be referred to the uh, Committee on Public Services so that the committee can conduct hearings on the same. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, so referred. Mr. President, I move for a minute suspension. Session suspended.
Mr. President, this juncture I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 1850 under Committee Report Number 24. This is the new Agrarian <coughs> Emancipation Act. I so move, Mr. President. There be no objection to the motion. Motion is approved. Mr. President, the uh, parliamentary status of the measures that we close the period of interpolations and debate. I now move to open the period of amendments. So move, Mr. President. There be no objection to the motion. Motion is to open the period of amendments. Of, is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with no committee amendments, considering that this is a substitute bill, I move that we open the period of individual amendments. Yes. There be no objection to the motion. Motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we recognize the sponsor, the distinguished lady from Las Piñas City, Senator Cynthia Villar, for her individual amendments. So moved. Senator Villar is recognized, madam. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Senate President. Uh, number one on section two, page two, line 16. After the word representatives, insert the phrase within the three-year period from the effectivity of this act. I so move, Mr. President. There be no objection to the amendment. Amendments approved. Number two, on section three, page two, line 27, replace 92,824 with 10,201. Replace 178,063.95 with 11,531.24. And on line 29, replace 119,061 with uh, 206,247,776.41 million. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection to the amendment. Uh, we just ask a clarificatory question. This is, uh, these numbers come from the Department of Agrarian Reform? Yes, yes. This is they the, made they finally came up with the list? Oh, yeah. So they finally came up with the number? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and you. the list of and beneficiaries. List. So. Okay. Therefore, there will be no objection to the motion. Motion is approved. Are the amendments approved? Number three is still on section three, page three, on line one, starting with the word provided, delete until line five. I so move, Mr. President. You are saying to provide it further to remove the provided all the way to line number five? Tanker yes. Okay. okay, there being no objection, the amendments approved. Number four, on page three, starting on line 11 to line 25, Delete the entire section five. Okay, page four, section. Page three. Page three. Starting on line 11 to line 25, delete the entire section five. Okay. There being no objection to the amendment. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Coco Pimentel, our minority floor leader is recognized. Uh, just a question, Mr. President, to guide us on our stand on the uh, proposed amendment. Uh, what will be the effect, Mr. President, of deleting the entire section five? Meaning to say, we will go the, back to the agrarian reform law. We are deleting this. So. Uh, it's still strict that they are non-transferable as a rule. And then for how long, Madam? Ten, ten, ten years. Ten years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ten we years. revert back to the land reform law. Thank you, Mr. President, for that clarification. Okay. There be no objection to the amendment. Amendments approved. On number five, on section 10, page four, on lines 27. May I just ask, before we take up uh, another matter, and I'd like to see clarification from the minority floor leader and the, the sponsor, what happens when you remove section five? It's supposed to be transferability, meaning, before, ano to, sa, um, sa nanay, tatay, papunta sa anak? Yeah, that holds under the land reform law. So under the land reform law, oh, you... We just follow the land reform law. But sometimes it's outdated. Major outdated no, but uh, because uh, it says there uh, from the issuance of CLOA 10 years. So they have issued the CLOA a long time ago. So there, that's better. Okay. Still holds. All right. What you're trying to say is... They no longer have to go through the 10 year prescription yeah, period. Yes. After yes. the 10 year prescription period is done. Uh, because we need to know the essence of each amendment. Yes. Okay, there. Okay. Please proceed, ma'am. We already have work. Uh, uh, we already approved it. Okay. Page. On uh, as page number five, on section 10, page four, on lines 27 and 31, delete the words or judicial. Also on page five, line eight, delete the word 
or judicial. And on page 4, line 30, delete the words or the court. Uh, I so move, Mr. There President. There being no objection to the amendment, amendments approved. Uh, that's all, Mr. President. Maybe we can ask the other senators yes. who will make their amendments. Yes, Mr. President, I move that uh, we recognize the distinguished gentleman from Sorsogon, Senator Chis Escudero, for his uh, individual oh. amendments. Sorsogon, Senator Escudero, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, distinguished majority floor leader. May I propose the following amendment? On page four, line seven, replace the phrase, quote, mandated herein end with the phrase, quote, provided in this act, and the comma, and the comma, um, and after the word amended, insert the phrase quote, and in relevant programs and projects implemented by the DA and government financial institutions concerned. Therefore, Mr. President, the amended section should now read as follows. Section seven, preference to credit facilities and support services for beneficiaries with paid amortizations. ARBs have completed payment of the amortization schedule and the payment of interest charges under Section 26 of Republic Act No. 6657 as amended, Section 6 of Executive Order No. 228 of 1987, and other agrarian reform laws shall be given preference in the provision of credit facilities and support services as provided in this Act in Section 37 of RA 6657 as amended and in relevant programs and projects implemented by the DA and government financial institu institutions concerned. So move, Mr. President. Yeah, it is accepted. There being no objection, accepted by the sponsor. Amendments are carried. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the Deputy Minority Leader, Senator Risa Ontiveros, would also like to propose our her individual amendments. I move that she be recognized, Mr. President. I distinguish Deputy Minority Floor Leader, Senator Risa Ontiveros, recognized. Salamat kaayo, Mr. President, and uh, good sponsor. Uh, I would like to propose one amendment and after which um, make a brief manifestation. Uh, Mr. President, good sponsor on page 5, line 30, that is section 12. I propose to amend section 12 to read as follows. Section 12, delete right of the landowner to just compensation and then add interpretation in bold letters, period. Nothing in this act shall diminish the right of landowners to just compensation for their agricultural lands acquired under the agrarian reform program. And add, nor shall it be interpreted to remove existing limitations on the transfer ownership and agricultural use of land. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, we accept the amendment. Madam Sponsor, my deep thanks. And if I may, I'd like to be allowed to explain this amendment because it is also an opportunity to articulate a fear raised by agrarian reform advocates that this bill might have the unintended consequence of ARBs allowing the utilization of their lands for non-agricultural use. O di kaya ibenta sa mga korporasyon na wala namang balak magsaka. The amendment emphasizes that the restrictions under current law still apply. Halimbawa, there are certain conditions that have to be met before land conversion is allowed, like the land is no longer suitable for farming. Ayaw naman po natin na maubos ang ating mga sakahan o di kaya natuluyang mawala sa kamay ng mga maliliit na magsasaka dahil yun naman po ang puso at diwa ng Carper Law. In fact, dahil nga po ang batas po na ito ay para sa maliit na magsasaka, I had hoped sana to pro propose an amendment that ARBs whose indebtedness attaches after December 31, 2022 shall likewise be relieved of the burden of future payments. Hindi po ito yung naka-mother cloa pa lang. Ito yung wala pa talagang distribution for one reason or another. But after back and forth consultations between our staffs, I was made to understand that it is the sponsor's opinion that this may complicate the implementation of the bill. Hindi ko na po pakukumplikahin pa, but as we pass this important legislation for our small farmers, maybe it is also important to put on the historical record that there are still a number of farmers for whom the struggle for land remains real, daunting, and in some cases a matter of life and death. 
two weeks ago, I filed a bill decriminalizing qualified theft of coconuts because it has been used as a tool by landowners in coconut plantations to suppress land rights and agrarian organizing. Our ARBs need this condonation law and they also need support services from the state, protections against landowner violence, and a policy framework that uplifts small farmers. And finally, po, a word to our implementors. Madam Sponsor, anticipating the implementation of this legislation, as I noticed, the law provides an exact number of ARBs, hectareage of land, and amount for condonation. I want to reiterate my earlier concerns on the possibility of inclusion and exclusion errors in coverage. I hope that our implementing agencies, the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Department of Agrarian Reform shall exercise due diligence to ensure that no one is excluded. Mechanisms are in place for appeal, for inclusion, and liberally interpret the law in favor of the farmers and ARBs. Muli, Madam Sponsor, salamat po at salam, uh, salamat kaayo, Mr. President. I just want to assure the Senator that uh, we are very much aware that there are still 350,000 hectares that has to be distributed to the small farmer. And we're going to do that, except that we cannot uh, condone a loan that is not yet in existence. That's not a good practice. So we have to wait and maybe the next Congress can uh, pass another condonation for the remaining uh, lands that will be distributed after this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President, last but not the least to introduce uh, uh, this individual amendment, Mr. President, is our minority leader, Senator Coco Pimentel. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Our distinguished minority floor leader, Senator Aquilina Coco Pimentel, the third is recognized. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. And... Uh, uh, we just apologize for the uh, different procedure that we're following for this measure. So usually we do it page by page. But anyway, this being a short short bill, naman madali po natin masundan yung ating mga uh, changes. So my first uh, proposed uh, amendment, Mr. President, is the deletion of Section One, the short title for this uh, measure, Mr. President. Uh, being, uh, as explained by our sponsor, this is a very simple bill, direct to the point. Where she wants to cover only one topic, condonation of the agrarian reform debts. Uh, so you know, we can dispense with uh, giving the measure a nickname, uh, Mr. President, because the purpose of the short title is giving uh, a measure a nickname. So I propose the deletion of Section 1. Uh, we accept. Okay. So... With yeah. Oh, there being no objection to the motion and it's accepted by the sponsor. And then we will and just renum renumber the sections yes. uh, at the end of everything, uh, Mr. Yes. President, again, yeah. without understanding. Yes. Thank you for that, Madam Sponsor. And then on... <clears throat> uh, the other concern, Mr. President, is... Uh, page 4 now. Page four, Mr. President. <clears throat> Page four, section eight. Malito. Page, yeah, Page four. Page four, section eight, Mr. President, on the estate tax exemption, uh, the <clears throat> the proposed amendments would be on line eight, after lands, insert the phrase covered by this act awarded, awarded to ARBs and therefore, and therefore also uh, delete the words of ARBs. 
ARBs, of ARBs. And then on line nine, I will make just one motion, Mr. President, the entire paragraph, so we will understand it. On line nine, remove the... Remove the phrase, as estates. Thank you. And on line nine, after, after B, remove exempt and uh, replace it with the word excluded. And on lines nine to 13, after the, after the, we removed section 5 already. Uh, section 8, ma'am. Uh, section 8. Section 8, section 8. <clears throat> Replace na lang. Replace Ito lang. Tapos itong second paragraph. Bayaan na natin. Bayaan na natin. I'm... Okay, lang. Uh, I, I withdraw. I withdraw all of my manifestations, Mr. President, to simplify everything. So this is take note. Uh, this is my, the approach, Mr. President. Uh, page four, section eight, first paragraph, which is from lines eight to thirteen. If we can. Delete that section, that paragraph, and replace it with the following paragraph. Okay. okay. Section 8, estate tax exemption. The agrarian reform lands covered by this act awarded to ARBs, comma, shall be excluded from the computation of his slash her gross estate in the event of his slash her death, Mr. President. Subject to... Subject to uh, finer styling, uh, Mr. President, but that's the idea to simplify it, Mr. President. What does the sponsor say? <laughs> I find my section better than that. <laughs> because I cannot the, understand that. Uh, it simplifies the idea that the, the land, the agrarian reform land granted to an ARB is exempted from Easy. his estate where the estate tax is computed. Yeah. Yeah. So, ang kasi dito, we, the, we are attaching it to the land, uh, Mr. President, and then, and then the phraseology is it's the estate tax return which shall not be subject to estate tax, which is, which is uh, not really exact, uh, Mr. President. Are you seeing almost so the what is the pleasure? Do you want a one minute suspension yeah, so you can confirm? Session suspended. Mr. President. Sorry,
solve it? Um, How to may, rephrase it? May we ask a sponsor to to repeat her question? Uh, we were suspended. What I mean, it's suspension, question? Mr. President, please. Oh, session suspended. Please, please. Okay, session suspended.
Please proceed, the sponsor and, and minority floor leader. Sorry for the delay, uh, Mr. President, and to our, our, uh, all our colleagues, no worries. Uh, Mr. President. So, uh, so page eight, we were, we were on page eight, uh, page four, section eight. So, the, the, mo the, the proposed amendment is for the deletion of the first paragraph of section eight. That would be lines uh, eight to 13. And it's replacement by the following paragraph. <laughs> the land awarded to ARBs shall be excluded from the gross estate for purposes of estate tax period. Mr. President. <coughs> what does the sponsor say? I accept, Mr. President. Very good. The amendments accepted. I need to section, I don't know. Section 10. Sana natin si Sigit. Tatlo. Tatlo. Dalawa is tapos din isa. Dalawa na lang. Okay. Next, next uh, proposal, Mr. President. Uh, section 10, page which is found on page four. Uh, introduce a second paragraph, a new second paragraph, which reads, citing this act, comma, the DAR, the AR, uh, shall move for the dismissal of all actions pending with the courts relating to the collection of unpaid principal and interests over agricult agricultural lands covered by our agrarian reform laws, period. I accept, Mr. President. There's an, the sponsor accepts, there's no objection. Amendment approved. Okay, the last one. But anyway, uh, just an explanation that that second paragraph will be read uh, together with the rest of the provisions yes. of the law. Now it's about the condonation. Yes. Uh, and then the last one, Mr. President, would be the title, amendment of the title. Uh, I, yes, uh, to, so that the title will now read as follows. Uh, an act. An act condoning all principal and interests of loans arising from the award of agricultural lands under the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program as of December 31, 2022, and for other purposes. I accept, Mr. President. Very good. Therefore, no objection. The amendment's acceptable sponsors. So we close the period of uh, amendments. Uh, from this representation, uh, that would be Thank all, uh, Mr. President. Thank subject, you. Subject, everything is subject to style uh, because yes. uh, we were confusing our stenographers. So subject to style to make sure that uh, your team and the sponsors team will get the wordings right. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, that is the extent of the uh, individual amendments. And so I now move to close the period of individual amendments. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection. Motion is approved. Mr. President, with the consent of the body, I move that we approve on second reading Senate Bill number 1850 as amended and subject to style. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection to the motion. The, uh, the bill... Senate Bill number 1850 and the committee report number 24, uh, as amended, subject to style, is hereby approved on second reading. Hope that we suspend consideration of the said measure, Mr. Suspended. President. Oh, section, sorry, consideration Considerations is, is in order to yes. suspended. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah, Thank you. To it. So, because, yeah. Consideration suspended. Consideration, yes, what? Mr. President. Just uh, give me that. Oh. Considerations.
बस देखे लग Okay. Mr. President, at this juncture and with the consent of the body, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 1470 under Committee Report Number Nine. This is the bill, Mr. President, on uh, State Universities and Colleges Land Use Development and Infrastructure Plan or LUDIP Act. So move, Mr. President. There be no objection. Consideration of the measure is in order. But yes, Mr. Have President. A, but there's a race, Senator Jingo raised his hand, uh, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I have I have been uh, patiently waiting for my bill to be discussed. In fact, it was in the number six item on the agenda, and uh, much to my surprise, the number seven in the agenda overtook the number six in the agenda. I just hope and pray uh, that uh, the bill that would amend Republic Act 11709 would be discussed today and hopefully to be approved tomorrow, Mr. President. Uh, the gentleman is right, uh, Mr. President, and that's the main reason why this uh, representation um, uh, mentioned that with the uh, consent of the body, Mr. President, and uh, we give our uh, commitment to the gentleman from uh, San Juan as he is very much aware of what's going on here on the floor, Mr. President, that we will tackle the uh, specific measure that he mentioned, Mr. President. The gentleman from, the, uh, from uh, San Juan is wearing his lucky tie, his uh, Irish tie. Still uh, <laughs> wishing that it's lucky, Mr. President. It Mr. President, lucky. I move for the previous question. And yes, we recognize our distinguished colleague from Sosogon. Thank you, Mr. President. We are ready to receive um, Questions and or suggestions or manifestations from our distinguished minority floor leader. May I just ask the majority leader, we are in the period, the parliamentary status is period of yes. interpolation? Yes, Mr. President, we are, uh, the status of the measure is that uh, we have sponsored the measure and uh, we are now in the period of interpolation, Mr. President. Please proceed. Anyone wishes to interpolate the gentleman? The from, uh, minority uh, leader, Mr. President, would like to ask some questions, Mr. President. Move that he be recognized, Mr. President. The good, distinguished minority floor leader is recognized, minority, Senator Aquino Coco Pimentel III. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. With the, with the permission of our sponsor, uh, this representation would just like to ask a, a few clarificatory questions so that our people, our constituents will, underst will understand more what, 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 what this measure is all about, Mr. President. Willingly, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. President. Actually, Mr. President, we are just using our time wisely here. So as we are working on the amendments on the Military Prof Professionalism Act, we are proceeding with our <clears throat> interpolation on other pending matters. So we are we are we are using our time. Uh, we appreciate, Mr. Uh, President, the minority Mr. leader's uh, passion to help the ma the majority, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, uh, there is already an existing land use uh, SUC's land use development and infrastructure plan or LUDIP. Act, if I am not mistaken, Mr. President. And this would be Republic Act number 11396. That is correct, Mr. President. And uh, if we are to uh, summarize, Mr. President, what is the new idea uh, being introduced by uh, the measure we are uh, discussing on the floor, Mr. President? Three things, Mr. President, Your Honor. Number one, it provides not only for a yearly but a five-year program in so far as the local um, infrastructure development program is concerned. Number two, it creates a structure whereby the, the implementation of such projects would be monitored. And number three, although your committee decided to remove it, but I have previously agreed with Senator Cayetano that we will be um, accepting a proposed amendment in so far as placing an exact amount um, to be appropriated for this purpose. So the five years, Mr. President, mentioned in our 
bill uh, is under current law just one year? Wala pong nakalagay, Mr. President, um, Your Honor. If, as you can see in Section 1, we had to specify it as proposed in the original Senate bill of Senator Pia Ketan. And then, Mr. President, uh, Section 1, which amends uh, Section 3 of RA 11396, provides that the LUDIP shall be linked with the land use plan and practice of the LGU, which has the, the jurisdiction over the territory of the SUC. Uh, what is the uh, purpose uh, of this linking, uh, Mr. President, and what would be the effect of, of this uh, requirement of linking on the, on the LUDIP, Mr. President? Mr. President, we did not amend that portion of the law that is found in the existing law. If you remove the portion with all caps and bold, it would read, shall also be required to follow the LUDIP, which shall be linked with the land use plan and practice of the local government units. So that is found in the original law, Mr. President, Your Honor. We did not amend that portion. And uh, from, from experience, Mr. President, uh, from the life of the law, of the existing law, uh, what has been the effect on the ground of this linking, Mr. President? Less than 10, Mr. President, Your Honor, have been able to comply with their LUDIP. So the, the, the issues are not uh, completely free to come up with a LUDIP because they have to take into consideration uh, whatever land use ordinances or plans? Of Not necessarily for that reason, Your Honor. I was merely stating a fact that um, out of the over 120 SUCs, um, less than 10 have their own LUDIPs. They have various reasons have been given. Number one would be the absence or lack of technical expertise in order to come up with the LUDIP as described in the original sought to be amended law RA 11396. But as an added information, Mr. President, Your Honor, very few LGUs have a land use plan. In fact, the DLG has been um, barking at the heads of most local government unit um, mayors, both city and municipality, to come up with the respective uh, land use plans. But it has to go through a an extremely long process, Mr. President, Your Honor, before it is finally approved by the DNR. So, so Mr. President, does this measure uh, aim to improve the, the formulation of LUDIPs by the SUCs from less than 10 to maybe close to the 120, Mr. President? That is the objective, Mr. President, Your Honor. That is why we are making it under this bill a condition precedent before any funds can be released for infrastructure purposes for them to complete first their LUDIP. Um, uh, para hindi po yung parang kabuting tumutubo na lamang yung mga building ng kaliwatkaran, depende kung sino presidente. And after X number of years, magmumukhang napakagulo ng compound or complex ng universidad. So, in effect, Mr. President, uh, this, is, this is a measure which also seeks to improve our budgeting process? Definitely, Mr. President, because if we don't do this, very much like in previous Congresses, we allocate 10 or 20 million across the board. If, um, like the University of the Philippines, they are given about 2 billion, then they have full discretion as to what to do with it based on their own plans and programs to be decided by the respective Board of Regents or Board of Trustees. But this would, in a way, tie their hands to us, to something that was planned and well thought of. Uh, actually, Mr. President, when I was reading this measure, do not worry. Will this not bloat uh, our budget? Because diba, it will be it be it will be like a bottom up uh, planning. Diba? So SUCs will come up with blue dips uh, submitted now to a uh, monitoring body. And no, then, to Chad, Mr. President. Uh, to Chad, to Chad, and then Chad uh, uh, submits it to. We'll consolidate it, Mr. President. The... Neda is there, DBM is there, DPWH is there, in order to make sure that the estimates, the programs of work, would be in line with the principles and policies 
of um, the department concerned, in this case, DPWH. And then the, they sum up the, the comprehensive blue dips, all of the, all of the ideas, the infrastructure uh, proposals, they sum it up, and the bottom line will now be included in the budget process through the budgets of the SUCs, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President, Your Honor, but that is subject to the cap given by DBM to the respective SUCs and to CHED. As you know, Congress has the power of the purse and therefore can decide to allocate the entire amount, half of the amount, zero of the amount that is within the power of Congress, given the power of appropriation, Mr. President. So the comprehensive blue dip, Mr. President, is first used by the executive branch to when it when it, it when it comes up with the NEP or yes, Mr. It President. is used by the by Congress, Mr. President. It starts with the it starts with the NEP, Mr. President. The entire budget process starts, in fact, not with the NEP, with a budget call of the DBM. And then the budget cap given by DBM to each agency. Mm. And then the output of that would be the NEP. The NEP will then be submitted to Congress for its proper consideration. So uh, is the budget process improved in the sense that when a member of Congress wants to amend the NEP uh, in favor of an infrastructure work in an SUC, the member of Congress must first consult the comprehensive uh, LUDIP submitted to Congress? If it is included there, Mr. President, very much like the innovation or the change proposed by Senator Laxon before that any and all public infrastructure projects in any locality must first be approved by the Regional Development Council in order to go through a process whereby it is not based on the mere whim of any congressman, be they a district or regular representative or party list representative. This is similar to that or akin to that, Mr. President, you want to give some rhyme and reason to the infrastructure projects being spent on by government insofar as SOCs are concerned. Yes, that, that, that idea, Mr. President, as far as the regional development councils are concerned, has remained an idea. It is, it, we, that, that there is no law uh, requiring such a process. So if this becomes... Local, Mr. President, it, was, it, it is being implemented. Since three years ago, since I became governor, Mr. President, any local project we would propose to any national government agency or official would necessitate RDC endorsement. I think it's in a memorandum or policy issued by the executive. So that uh, I think uh, to 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 really give uh, life uh, to the essence of that memorandum or directive uh, during the budget budget process, uh, all legislators must be aware aware of the said uh, memorandum or the spirit behind the memorandum before proposing. Amendments to the uh, budget, Mr. Well, President. DPWH will not approve it, Mr. President, because that memorandum binds the DPWH. And if it does not have RDC recommendation or endorsement, they will not agree to include it. So thank you for that, uh, Mr. President. So that, that system is, we are, we are just transplanting it now to the SUC. So uh, Mr. and via a law and not based on a mere memorandum. Yes, thank you for that cl clarification, Mr. President. Just last point, Mr. President. Uh, on, pay, oh, well, well, on, page, but on, this, on the second page, the last paragraph, it mentions uh, compliant SUCs, meaning to say there are non-compliant SUCs. So uh, are these non-compliant SUCs uh, sanctioned in any way, or do we intend to sanction them in any way, Mr. President? Mr. President, may, may the gentleman kindly repeat the uh, page and section he's referring to? Uh, there's no page number, but I think it's page two, Mr. President, and then line uh, lines 24 to 25. It mentions uh, the concept of all compliant SUCs. So meaning to say, if there are compliant SUCs, there are non-compliant SUCs. So, uh, Mr. President, mali yung copy ko, page two, lines 24, 25 does not state that. Um, what section, Mr. President, Your Honor? It's section one, Mr. President. Because, uh, still that, on section that's one. I'm in the section three, but uh, let me count the paragraph one, two, three, fourth paragraph, Mr. President. Okay. Starting with the CHED shall include the LUDIP of mm -hmm. each okay. SUC in a five-year comprehensive LUDIP for all compliant SUCs within one year from the receipt thereof. So 
there is uh, this introduces the concept of a non-compliant SUC. So, are they are these non-compliant SUCs sanctioned or being sanctioned in any way, Mr. Well, President? Mr. President, under existing rules and under the existing law, RA 11396, there are no sanctions, and that is why, in a way, the quote-unquote sanction would be that no such proposed infrastructure project will be included in the budget unless they comply with the requirements provided for um, under LUDIP as amended by this proposed bill. And okay, and uh, how binding would this rule be, Mr. President, on uh, members of Congress when they propose amendments to the budget, Mr. President? Um, they're free to propose, Mr. President, but um, DBM itself would be required or it would be part of um, the monitoring team and would be part of enacting the rules and regulations. So I presume, very much like the suggestion of Senator Luxon before, um, this would be a requirement of DBM for any such infrastructure projects that would be done within SUCS. I'm sure DBM will do this, Mr. President, Your Honor, dahil kulang naman palagi yung pera at budget nila. Binibigyan natin sila ng bala at rason para tumanggit, magsabing hindi pa pwede para mapondohan nila yung mga pwede at gusto nila. Sige po, para, you know, there's a parang system of prioritization, transparency, and planning, as well as planning. Uh, Mr. That is correct, Mr. President, because at the end of the day, governance simply defined is allocating scarce resources. And if you're able to do that, then you govern properly. So thank you for the uh, time given to this representation by our generous uh, sp sponsor, Mr. President. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, there being no member of uh, Mr. Mr. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. I'm just sorry. My apologies to disrupt the flow. But uh, may I just ask the sponsor if maybe tomorrow we can discuss this a bit further? Because I'm kind of confused what this uh, utilization of land for SUCs is all about. Uh, apologies to my being uh, ignorant about it. It's because I've been studying other matters like the AFP problem and the problems of other, uh, of course, the uh, grand reform problem. So this is a bit new. Uh, the reason why I'm, uh, I'm raising this issue is that according to our Senate President Pro Tempore, if there is no SU, if there's no uh, land used for the SUC, uh, it's possible that the budgets cannot, will not be released to them to that, to that effect. Is that, is that correct, uh, Your Honor? That is correct, Mr. President, Your Honor, but it's not new. This is actually found in Republic Act number 11396. We only required, number one, as I said earlier, that we will be provide, requiring a five-year plan and not only a yearly plan, and the law was silent on that before. Number two, it set up a monitoring um, committee in order to make sure that the implementation would be in accordance with their um, LUDIP. And number, um, number um, three, it says that prioritization of funding and funding specific would be um, for those who are compliant insofar as having a LUDIP is um, concerned. There is no provision, Mr. President, mandating it in the existing law, RA 11396. And I think the Bill of Senator PS seeks to strengthen that in order to force SUCs to come up with a comprehensive plan before asking for anything from the national government outside of their own budget. If it's uh, with the permission of our dear sponsor, can we table this for one day and I'll dis we can discuss this tomorrow? No objection, Mr. President. Thank you, thank you. But the reason why I, take it, I, I took this up is because I got a call from the House of Representatives that the chairperson of the Committee on uh, Indigenous Peoples is setting up a task force to look into the problem of Central Mindanao University and the incursion or the the claims of the indigenous peoples. So, and daming problema na mga SUCs eh, because uh, the Supreme Court, I believe, came out with a uh, uh, ruling uh, many decades, a decade ago, stating that the land pass SUCs, if it's titled, has prior rights. So, I don't know how this comp this uh, SUCs can come up with land use plans when there are different problems such as this. Mr. President, the answer would be they cannot. And we cannot also legally fund any infrastructure projects in those areas where in ownership is questionable. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the absorptive capacity for local school building program is at a low side, principally because DEPED also required that before any new school building can be constructed, they should show evidence or proof that that land is titled under the name of the Department of Education 
or the Republic of the Philippines. Barring that, if there is any question with respect to ownership, government is not legally permitted to build anything on that land. So if indeed there is such a question in that SUC, it is only proper that none, no, no project be spent on by government in that area, Mr. President, Your Honor. Because we might be constructing in bad faith, and anything we construct will simply be turned over to the supposed owner, so you should they end up winning the case against the SUC. Yes. So with the permission of our distinguished sponsor, if we can take this up tomorrow, I'll discuss with you 10 minutes uh, in the lounge on the essence of this particular measure. Uh, no if it's objection, right. Mr. President. Mr. President, the Senate President Pro Tempore, Senator Lauren Ligarda, is seeking the floor. I move that he be recognized, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I wanted to manifest my support for this measure because for so long there had been unutilized land of our state universities and colleges. But I also expressed my concern that there could be forest limits. And um, I just take note, Mr. President, that in this chamber, we have not passed setting the forest limits since my first term in 1998. So perhaps at the proper time, since we're not closing yet the period of interpolation, I would like to ask the sponsor if there are state universities and colleges that have primary forest within their area of jurisdiction and how this would be reflected uh, in the land use that we are seeking under the LUDIP bill. Second, um, in the past years in our General Appropriations Act, we had mandated uh, biodiversity conservation in all SUCs. I wonder if the SUCs had complied and whether at the proper time amendments can be made once this is enacted into law so that a conservation area, perhaps an arboretum of Philippine native tree species uh, can be allocated in our SUCs as well. So that and many other concerns to further enhance uh, this proposed measure will be on hand when it is taken up on the floor again. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill number 1470. So move, Mr. President. There be no objection. Motions approved. May I appeal to the body that we take up, or to our majority leader, that we take up the issue on the military generals already? Thank you. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President. Chief, you want to say something? Chief, Chief, Okay. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, before we proceed with the AFP bill, Mr. President, may I be uh, allowed to just welcome our guest from the gallery, uh, Congressman A.A. A. Ligarda, the uh, brother of our Senate President Pro Tempore of Antique, and the board members of Antique, board members Ladislao Molina, Beriong, Dimamay, Nikia, Sumande, Palacios Jr., Mark Canha, Pamela Azucena, Sanchez the Fort, and board member Elio. Uh, welcome to the Senate. Yes, welcome to your Senate, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Antique. Welcome. Mr. President, at this juncture, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill number 1849 under Committee Correct. Report number 23. This is an act strengthening professionalism in the armed forces of the Philippines, amending RA 11709. So move, Mr. President. There have been no objections to the motion. Motion is approved. Mm -hmm. Mr. President, the parliamentary status of the measure is that we are now in the period of individual amendments. On that note, Mr. President, I move that we resume the period of individual amendments. I so move, Mr. President. There will be no objection. The motion is approved. Period of individual amendments is open. May we do this, gentlemen and ladies? Yes, the proper Mr. President. way is doing it page by page, page as we way by tradition, so that we don't keep coming back to the page. So. If I may, Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Page one. Aside from the title, are there any amendments to Section one? Page one. May I ask the uh, our gentlemen on the floor and ladies? Page one. Yes, yes, yes. The amended, the working draft, uh, my dear colleagues, is the amended copy as of February 22, 2023. No amendments on page one? No amendments. Uh, sponsor, page two. Page two. 
We had uh, just completed the uh, amendments uh, last week, Mr. President. So, page two, we have no amendments. Page two. Senator Minority Leader, no amendments on page two. I think this is what we all agreed on. Chief of Staff, three years. And then the uh, head of the Philippine Army, Air Force, and Navy, Flag, Navy Command are two years. Maximum duty duty of two years. All the teachers. Okay. Should be ready. Okay. No amendments on page two. Page three. Are we all using the same uh, yeah. uh, yes. draft uh, minority yes, leader? Mr. We're all using the amended draft. February 22. February 22, 2023. Okay. Page three, Paul. Page three. The minority leader singing the floor. Minority Mr. leader is recognized. Okay. Uh, page, we are on page, just a clarificatory question on page three, uh, so that I will be guided with my proposed amendment. Uh, page three, paragraph C, there is still this one year uh, prohibition on uh, promotion, Mr. President, but what, uh, what does this mean, Mr. President? The, <coughs> the prohibition is limited to only the four, the four Positions enumerated, Mr. President? The three. Yes, Ito pong paragraph C po tayo. Page three, paragraph C, line six to 18. Yes, Mr. President. May I know your question, Mr. President? Uh, just a clarificatory question, Mr. President. Uh, well, the reason behind the one year, uh, uh, pro uh, the, the, uh, provi uh, the provision, that states provided that they shall have at least one year remaining of active service before compulsory retirement unless promoted as chief of staff or the following vice chief of staff and the uh, the deputy chief of staff the unified command commanders and the inspector general is that it is trying to avoid the uh, photo finish uh, appointments in the uh, house bill they reduced it to six months, but I uh, I uh, retained it to, to one year, Mr. President, to avoid the uh, photo finish appointments. May we ask also, may I also ask, uh, with the permission of the minority floor leader, in the old law, wasn't it one year also before you're appointed to general? Or no, to the position? existing law, RA 11709, does not... Uh, Provide the, this provision, but the old law. I remember the uh, the commission on appointments. We would never, we can never. If you are one year left, there's a one year ban for appointment to higher to pro pro promotion. If there's one year left in your. Meron po yan sa presidential degree 1896, 18. So lumang batas. 1638 now. Presidential degree. RA 8186, Mr. President, as amended. As amended. It's so, there, tama. so my one year ban on appointments, I remember that because that happened to several generals like General Hidalgo. Hindi, dahil late po ang action natin sa commission appointments, hindi siya na confirm and therefore na bypass siya and it was already within that one year ban. So there is an existing. Yes, Mr. President. Okay. All right. Is that, uh, that answers the question of the minority leader? But if I remember correctly, Mr. President, I think uh, the CA confirmed some appointments even when the uh, appointee had less than uh, one year of uh, active service remaining, Mr. President. So, yes, because um, what had happened there, Your Honor, I was a member of that CA. I was not the presiding officer. But it was, there was an appeal by our presiding officer, Senator Soto, uh, Senator Laxon and oh, actually Senator Laxon was very strict 
Yes. Ayaw niya ipa-confirm. Uh -huh. But uh, many members, including Senator Bongo at the time, were appealing to the, our, our colleagues na kawawa naman, nagsakripisyo yung mama ng uh, 34 years of service, risking his life, he was a Marine General. And because of the delay in the promotion, promotions board, sinabit one week before his, uh, I believe, huh? one week or one month before his uh, uh, 55th birthday, uh, we were going on recess. So, hindi po kasalanan ni General Hidalgo. There was an exemption made, but that was like, supposed to be last of the last. Because you always gave last. Sige, last chance. Last chance. Naging last of the last June. So, uh, again, the plenary powers of the, of the CA at the time deemed it uh, necessary to just uh, approve his point, uh, approve his uh, uh, promotion. Yes, but, and given that historical fact, Mr. President, that's why this representation at the proper time and at the proper place will introduce amendment to make, to make it strict that any promotion in violation of that one-year prohibition shall be null and void, uh, Mr. President. What okay. do you mean? Uh, the... all, all appointments in violation of that one-year rule. So taking away this uh, claim discretionary power of the CA to waive the uh, requirement of the law, Mr. President. Uh, you want to do it for the CA or for the... Look, that, to put it to put in to put to put in this law that all uh, appointments in violation of that one year prohibition shall be null and void uh, but i think these are two different cases your honor because the appoint he was appointed one year prior he was appointed a month before his birthday of 55 mm. so pero na late ang pagsubmit then one month before sinabit na nagbreak tayo Dahil nag-break tayo, we could not act on his appointment. When we came back, it was already uh, one month after the ban. So, nangyari, Mr. Minority Floor Leader, there were, of course, technicalities, and you're a lawyer, and other there technical issues. Pero yun nga, because ang sabi ng armed forces, hindi kasalanan naman ni General Hidalgo na nag-break tayo. And uh, ang, natama, ang, ang nangyari, kawawa naman po yung mama. Wala naman po siyang kaso. He has a sterling military career. So we, what we did was we compelled the AFP Board of uh, Promotions to give it sooner rather than later. We compelled them that if there is a high-ranking officer to be appointed as a general or, or, or one rank higher, it should be given several months before his uh, 55th birthday. Para sa ganun, ma-actionan po natin. Kaya sometimes we have marathon hearings for the military para hindi sila matamaan doon sa 55th birthday nila. And the one-year ban. Uh, Mr. President, may I ask uh, the good gentleman from Togende or may, may I clarify, may we clarify under what uh, circumstances will, will the appointment be uh, null and void, Mr. President? Well, when the when the appointee has less than one year of active service, Mr. President. But as clarified by our uh, presiding officer, the Senate President, uh, giving, giving technical meaning to, it's to it. appo appointment yes, and confirmation, confirmation. Yes. Uh, that, that fact that we are talking about did not actually violate the one year yes. remaining of active yes. service uh, yes. because the appointment was extended uh, more than more than a year before the uh, yes before the retirement. With that clarification, Mr. President, at least there is no there is no instance or incident where uh, an appoint an appointment violative of the one year what? prohibition was ever relaxed relaxed or uh, yes. uh, confirmed, Mr. President. That's good. That I can confirm that because we will not allow also a commission on appointments will not allow it if it was done within that one-year ban. Mm -hmm. We would not have heard that person's uh, promotion. Yes, yeah, so with that clarification, Mr. President, uh, from the uh, Senate President who was part of the part of process, they're taking an active part also in the process, he has, he has clarified that uh, uh, there is no need for uh, stricter language because yes. we have not, we have not actually violated the say it the said the said, the said yes, mandate sir. of the law. Yes, yes thank yes, you, sir. So I'm not karon lang po ng uh, konting uh, confusion po sa recollection of uh, 
the facts, uh, Mr. President. So, and uh, and we're we're sorry for that. So where are we now, Mr. President? Uh, me, excuse yeah. me, Mr. President, if I may add, mm -hmm. no. the instance uh, cited by our uh, Senate President usually involves an ad interim appointment that is uh, enacted by the uh, Commission on Appointments. Then the appoint then the appointee was reappointed. This is uh, without the fault of the appointee, Mr. President. Ah, but if the reappointment is already within the one year ban, Bawal Mr. Yun. President, uh, I, 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 I take the position na bawal na po yan. Yes, yes, under the uh, original law. Uh, I, take the I do not know with our sponsor, Mr. President. Can we ask the sponsor when the DND is beside them and the AFP is beside them? Can they? Have they actually, can I ask this question, Your Honors, have they actually appointed anyone within the one year ban? To a higher, to higher promotion, or to promotion, to higher rank. According to my resource persons here, before the enactment of Republic Act 11709, there was no appointment that was that was made. Correct, Mr. because there's a law, and we're reiterating the law, uh, Your Honor, Minority Floor Leader here, that it's not going to be allowed. Yes, uh, okay, na po. Uh, we, with the clarification from someone who was there. Uh, yes. actively participating in the proceedings and in the deliberations, yes. Your Honor has clarified what has happened. There was yes. actually no violation of the law. No, sir. Okay. Kasi, but we're going into the technical meanings of uh, appointment and uh, confirmation. Yes, okay. so, uh, thank you for that clarification, uh, Mr. President. Thank so, you. yung intention ko po that to introduce the stricter language has become uh, more academic and I will not pursue it, uh, Mr. Thank President. Thank you, Mr. President. So where are we now, Mr. Page, we can move to page four. So no amendments to page three. Page four. Page. Ito na po yung masalimuot. Opo. Four, five, four. Page Right, so must be deleted. May I ask for a minute to spend?
Mr. Joint Leader, uh, I believe the good gentleman from Cavite has one amendment that is acceptable to all. Maybe we can just listen to his amendment if it's accepted already by our sponsor. Yes, Mr. President, I move that we recognize the uh, distinguished gentleman from Cavite, Senator Francis Tolentino, to introduce his individual <laughs> amendments. So move Senator Mr. Tolentino is recognized. Mr. President, uh, this is a harmless, no cues amendment, Mr. President, uh, accepted, pre-accepted pre by the accepted. good sponsor. And if the good sponsor would have a would like to have a simple explanation of this, together with some members of our colleague, uh, this chamber, this this amendment refers to those who are studying abroad, Mr. President. These are these are the these are the cadets going to the Korean Military Academy, Japanese Self Defense Force Academy, the West Point, the Annapolis and the U.S. Air Force Academy, Mr. President. Current situation, Mr. President, is that prior to their stint abroad, they would have to stay here for one and a half years, starting 01 April, and then wait for one and a half years before entering into a competitive exam before being admitted to the West Point, for instance. And then when they get to West Point, it is as if, their previous stint with the Philippine Military Academy would be considered as an inactive service, Mr. President. So when they graduate, this is, no offense, the cream of the crop, when they graduate after four years, their length of service would start after finishing four years, for instance, in West Point. Or for instance, when they join the Korean Military Academy, they would need to have a one-year language course. So in effect, Mr. President, they lose two and a half years. So in terms of longevity pay, which happens every five years, if you graduate from the Philippine Military Academy plus one year, you get five years, and, that's, and that has something to do with your additional pay. It has something to do with your active service. It has something to do with your length of service. And it has something to do again, Mr. President, with your survivorship benefits, your heirs. If you get ambushed, for instance, Mr. President, uh, after 20 years, your heirs will have that. But if you graduate from the West Point or Annapolis, you're still short of several years. So disparity, this disparity and inequity can be solved, Mr. President, through the following amendment, which I will put forward if the good sponsor will accept. On page five, line one of Republic Act 11709, page five, line one, insert a new section three to read as follows. Active duty refers to the service or duty as a commissioned officer, comma, enlisted personnel, comma, cadet, comma, probationary officer, comma, trainee or drafty in the regular force of the AFP, colon, provided, comma, that, comma, the period of cadetship as creditable service for foreign service academy slash foreign military training institutions shall include the number of days slash, slash months slash years of cadetship prior to entry to such academy slash institution and the equivalent mandated period of the program instructions of the training institution he attended, comma, yes. to include the required language course if applicable period. Mm -hmm. And to renumber the subsequent sections accordingly, I so propose, Mr. President, if the good sponsor would accept. Accepted, Mr. President, and I bow to the wisdom of... Uh... One of the two generals here in this uh, August chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I think uh, this will, accepted. This will uh, be a good news for all graduates of the West Point, Annapolis, U.S. Air Force Academy, the Korean Military Academy, the Japanese Self-Defense Force Academy, mm -hmm. and even perhaps those attending the South Carolina 
Military Academy, the Citadel in Charleston. Including South the Carolina. Development Authority of the Philippines located in your hometown of Tagaytay City. I, I think so, Mr. President. So, Mr. President, I thank the good sponsor for his wisdom in accepting this. And I, and I vow to join the uh, discussions tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, this juncture removed the... Suspend consideration of uh, Senate Bill Number 1849 under Committee Report Number 23. So, move, Mr. President. If I, I act on the motion to suspend, may I just ask the Secretariat to invite all our members the 1.30 uh, p.m. caucus together with the... Uh, am I? 1.30. 1.30. Uh, they are here at 9 o'clock to, to attend the hearing. Of EDCA, Mr. President. Okay. So they can wait until 1.30. If you What's know. important is we need to talk to, we have to be sure that we invite General Charlie Galvez, who's now Secretary Charlie Galvez of the... We can make it earlier, uh, if you wish, Mr. Also, President. Uh, General Santino. Yes, we can make it earlier, if you wish, and uh, you know, probably if you, if you can host uh, lunch tomorrow, Mr. President. Yes, actually, I have a lunch. <laughs> That's my problem. But uh, I can join you at 1.30 at my office boardroom or do you want in this boardroom in the back at my office boardroom on the sixth floor we'd like to invite all of our colleagues to join this is a very important measure we do not want to make a mistake once again and have to come back after one year because there's problems with the implementation of the law so um uh before we suspend just a reminder for the secretariat to call the cos Chiefs of Staff of all our colleagues, if they can attend tomorrow's meeting at 1.30, all members, so including the minority, of course, and uh, all members of the majority. Yes, uh, Minority Leader. Since an amendment was made, Mr. President, can we request for another clean copy? Yes. Uh, so we'll tomorrow, come up tomorrow with a, new, ma, ma, yes. smoother a work. working copy. And the amendments that's prepared properly, that we do it per page, please. So with that, uh, the motion is to suspend. There's been no objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, March 1, 2023. So move, Mr. President. There being no objection to the motion, session is, uh, rather, session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Wednesday, March 1, 2023. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat.